Hi, I'm Sarah Jazz. Welcome to Music Exposed. I'm very glad you could all be here. There's so much reverb on this mic, I don't even know. Let's fix that. Hi! I'm wearing my pink top today. Can't you tell? It's a very beautiful top. I appreciate that. Thanks for, thanks for giving me such a warm welcome. I'm here, you know, as usual, to be the host of Music Exposed. And I really appreciate when you guys have the competitions to guess what I'm wearing. Uh, go away. You're supposed to be doing your thing. Get... Yeah, no, I'm just bothering you because I know that you're leaving. So Sarah Jazz apparently is just like, I just get to the show whenever I want to now. It's fine. It's, it's cool. That's what the schedule is. We don't, we don't even care anymore. We just do whatever we want on this show. MusicExposed.show. I am so excited today to have the phenomenal, the amazingly skilled Alana Maddie joining us. For those of you who don't, oh, thank you so much, Warrior, for that gift up to Alana. She is amazing. And somehow she was like a, it was funny because her and I were just talking. She was kind of like a secret to me. And we were talking about how some music streamers stay secrets to other music streamers for long periods of time. And it's kind of crazy and amazing how that works out. Like I somehow didn't really know Alana. Like, but now I know we like, you like me more. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. She was the secret streamer. So I went into her stream when it, when I went into her stream, it was like, and it played the Zelda music. And I, and then I got a piece of the Triforce. It was really good. That's, that's how that worked out. But I'm very excited to have her in here. Also clearly an interior decorator, because I remember seeing her post how she was tearing her kitchen apart and, you know, talking about fascinating things like that, because that's what you want to hear on a music show. You want to hear us talk about people tearing their kitchen apart and video games and all those kinds of things. I appreciate that, Prince Adam. I, I don't know that I rock that much, but I'm very, very excited. Also, a desk architect. Ah, yes, that's right. I did see on social that she had built her own desk, too. So I'll need to ask about that. I'm, I'm curious. Cabinets and shit. That's right. Music exposed. Cabinets and shit. That's... that's what the show is all about. We just want to know about your hardware. That's why I dressed up like this. I'm very fancy and dressed up for the show. You know, this is how, what I normally do. And also, I didn't really travel with any dress clothes, which that doesn't help me, does it? I didn't really travel to Germany with any of that stuff. I wasn't thinking about it. Okay? I just wasn't, which is a lot to think about. And I'll pretend. Here, let's go over. Let's go over and meet my co-host. Are you guys ready? Are you guys excited? Here we go. This is my co-host, Pink Chair. How you doing, Pink Chair? Good to see you. Sometimes, the best part about this is that I can sit in either chair. So like I can sit in this chair and I can be Sarah Chaz and I can sit in this chair and be the silence noise. So I'm here to present to you today the, the internal dialogue that happens before music exposed between Sarah Chaz and the silence noise. I am, I am Sarah Chaz, I'm actually both. I am both the Silence Noise and Sarah Jazz. So it's like, hey, Sarah, how are you doing today? Okay. Do I look hot? Am I hot in this outfit today? Do I, do I look good? Hold on. Do I look good? Oh, don't, don't worry, Sarah. You look great today. I'm glad, that, I'm glad that you dressed up so much and that you look so good. Oh, but I don't know. I think I could be hotter. Do you think I could be a little bit hotter? You know, if I sat maybe like this, oh, my head, it's cut off of the camera. Everything needs to be perfect at all times on the camera. Oh, well, that's okay, Sarah. The good news is, is that you can take care of that in just a few seconds. It's not really that big of a deal. And <laughs> Northbound Matt, do you think I should tell them that I'm a professional touring jazz musician? Maybe I should. It's like, you know what, guys? When I was on tour, I used to be really hot and really skinny. Let's spend the next three hours watching videos of me being really hot and really skinny so I could talk about how hot and skinny I once was and I'm not now, you know, that's the thing. And it's like, oh, Sarah, I don't think you should do that. Like, I actually like how you look right now and I, I, and I think most people in your chat like how you look right now and it's totally okay. But if you really wanna spend the next three hours, never mind talking about being on tour and the music stories. We just wanna talk about how skinny you look and that kind of thing. Oh, well, the good news is, is that I look good. Like. I'm going to spend a few minutes now tweaking the color settings on the camera to make sure that it makes my skin glow just the right way. I need to glow on camera for my people. It's very important 
to make sure that I glow the right way. And it's like, what? What? I, I'm just, I'm just doing what our therapist told us we needed to do. Are you going to join this show or what? Are you ever going to be on the show, Sarah Jazz? I'm just asking, like, listen, our therapist told us it is. It's, what therapist are you talking about? Our, our relationship counselor told us that we needed to have dialogue like this. Okay. Hi, I'm can just... I sit here or do I have to sit oh, on here? Hi. Hi. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, it's, I guess it's just your show now. Hello, Our guys. therapist also said it was bad for you to put therapist. me behind you. What are you talking about? I'm just, uh, our therapist told me that it was bad to keep taking the back seat to all of Sarah's needs and desires. Do I look hot? Guys, when I was on tour, I was, used to be so much hotter. Like, do you guys want to see pictures? I have some pictures on Instagram. Are you going to be the silence noise now? No, you have oh, to do it. Oh, I'm uh, the silence Now you have to talk. Noise. Hold on. You have to do the exercise now, too. If I do the exercise our therapist tells us, you have to do it. All right. I'm going to give you the space. So oh. you did you. Wait. Now, now it's your turn. All Wait, right. I need to put on music because we have no music on this. That's, I don't need music. You, yes, we do music. We, uh, yes, we do music. <laughs> we, do, we do actually music. Yes, we do music. Yes, we do music. Okay. You got your music. Um, I got my music. Now you have to do so. your exercise. Do what the okay. therapist says, okay? Hi guys, how are you? Uh, you don't talk like that. <laughs> <laughs> you nailed it. See, you hey don't guys, know. Hey guys, how are you doing? I hope you're doing well today. That is how I talk. And uh, welcome to Music Exposed. I'm so excited to meet uh, Alana Maddie. I really like her music. She's super awesome. What do you think, Sarah? Oh, I think it's super awesome that you're here, Ken. So I can't, I, I'm super bad at impressions, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you're supposed to know. I don't know how to do impressions. I'm sorry. I liked your impression of me. I like I like how your impression of me ended in. Oh, I don't talk. I don't talk like that. Because <laughs> I don't true. know. I don't know how to. I legit don't know how to do impressions. I'm so bad at those. I I do really good impressions. I'm actually I'm actually known Thank on my you, stream for uh, my Madison for the follow by the for way. my impression skills. Yes. Everyone comes to me and they you're ask me to do. You're very good at that, actually. <laughs> Not even kidding you. You're very good I'm at imper very you're very at good it. at impersonating me. Like, really good. I'm really bad at impersonating you. I can't impersonate. What am you. I like? Tell. Okay, so I would like to know this. So huh. tell me, Sarah Jazz. Tell Music Exposed the people that are dying to know, which is all no one that watches the show. All of no one. All of the zero people that want to know this. I need to know the answer. What what am I like? What is it like to be around the silence? Man? Um, he can be very obnoxious. He is good. You I like that. Be... Prince, uh, he's good. You can be very obnoxious. <laughs> like he will. That. What? <laughs> honk honk giraffe me Morgan has ah man money son. <laughs> That's not that inaccurate. No, <laughs> he's very loud. Part. He laughs a lot. He's like. <laughs> <laughs> Like you're, <laughs> you're very loud. Like you laugh very loudly. He talks a lot. Like he, you talk so much. Sometimes I'm like, I'm tuning out. I'm already like on planet Zion. I'm like, where Zion. the hell I'm? Yeah, I'm on. I'm on. Yeah, that's how far away I am. You understand? Like I'm so far. Like I already heard all the stories from all the planets and all beings and all the planets he's still talking about something like he won't shut up he talks Ouch. so fucking much he talks so much it's fine it's okay like i i like listening but sometimes i tune out oh, it's like fuck up Sarah. thank you oh so God, much God, for God. Let me support the... this show now or my donation <laughs> will be forgotten as usual <laughs> I can't with you. Oh, Hong Kong giraffe. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. Get organized. Get organized. Man, medicine. But he is like he legit. Like he is so loud. He is. He talks a lot. He talks a lot. Is super loud. And then he talks. He he like. He is very good to be around though. He he tells me how much he appreciates me and he sees <laughs> things that I do for him. And you're very easy to be around. I appreciate Very that. Easy. Thank you. And you know, the good part is that he talks so much is good because I don't talk. She doesn't. I don't talk. I'm very quiet. Like, in, I know it's hard to believe, but I'm a person who is very, very quiet. In she was world. actually showing me a picture book tonight. She's like, here, look at my picture book. <laughs> yeah. She I, was. I, I don't even talk. That's the thing, you know? I'm very, I'm, 
<laughs> Adam. Ken is so easy. It's true. He is easy. He is very easy. I'm a rock but hero. <laughs> in terms of being easy or difficult, I feel like I'm more easy than you are in terms How of... How so? In terms of easy, in terms of being easy, in terms of bed. Like, oh, I'm geez. always horny. He isn't. <laughs> like, I... <laughs> I music exposed. <laughs> this is music. Hi, welcome to Music Exposed, where we talk about. Do you remember back in week four when you used to tell me, "Silence, I think you make too many sex jokes on stream." Yes. And now you're like, "I'm going to tell the intimate details of our sex life live on Music Exposed." Yes, I think that's, that's fine. I think it's very important. You know. I, I, mean? I agree. What then? Why was it inappropriate when I was doing? Apparently, we've just moved beyond it. You're like, there's a certain no, threshold. It's... There's this <laughs> horny, horny, horny. Sardis, give me your dick. Yes. That is. <laughs> yeah, that's me. That, your impressions are. Yeah, your impressions are they're spot bang on. on. They're Anyways, spot on. I here. Cheers, guys. Oh. Cheers, Cheers, chat. <laughs> Cheers. Well, okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Well, okay, X. Thank you. Thank you. Twenty-two Thank you so months much. of bad puns and dirty sacks. Damn right. <laughs> bad puns and dirty sacks. Very true. This is a gin and tonic. It's it's very fancy. So Alana asked us earlier, and she she thought I forgot about that question, but I didn't. I played your song, the your two songs, your ornaments the other day. I played your two songs. I did play your two songs. Anyways, hi, welcome to Music Exposed. We talk about music on the show. Um, yeah, tell us about music. We talk about <laughs> music on the show. Uh, I hey guys, I'm talking about music right now. Hi. Hi guys. Music. Hi. Uh, uh, I talk about we talk about music on this show. <laughs> um. <laughs> High quality entertainment. High quality That's happening entertainment, right now. Of course. Yes. And for all the people who don't, who are just listening on the podcast, I just made the sexiest face. <laughs> Just imagine a wound making a sexy face yeah. if you don't know what I look like, yeah. and that's the face I was making. Exactly. I'm making a sexy face right now, too. Yeah. He is. Look at that. Wow. Ooh. Oh, you know, oh. that doesn't help my horniness. That's true. <laughs> horny, 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 honk, honk, honk. <laughs> I like how Northbound Matt thinks I'm a goose. Yeah. Honk, so honk, by the honk. way, so we need to we need to start be, get, getting into music exposed. Um, we need to get it in with music exposed. We need to get it in, baby. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Code Warrior. See, Code um, Warrior is being he's he's he 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 doesn't. Girl, he and I, I don't need nature a rock start. We don't need a we don't need a relationship counselor like you and I need. Okay, yeah. I'm just saying. Warrior and I do fine without the relationship Why do I counselor. Look so horrible. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is a good episode today. Hi, hello. I am late, and I am obnoxious today. So TOS, um, according to Wolfgang. Yes, just saying. So, uh, <laughs> so video games. Do you play any video games? What does that have to do with music? That has to do. <laughs> Alana, she's in the video game industry, and I want to know of you. If, you want to um, know of you. Is Sarah wearing... My sister made this dress! How could you disrespect my sister's dress like that? Wearing a tablecloth? This is not a tablecloth. This is a. This is my sister's... My sister it was a fancy, it was a fancy tablecloth. She made it, it for out of a tablecloth as a joke. <laughs> she probably did, and she was like, I made this very, I made, I made, she would troll me like that. I made this dress, I really love it. Wear it, Sarah. They all are, say, a vestido now explode online. Uh, <laughs> oh sister God, bought it at the dollar store, probably. It's just a dollar store cl yeah. tablecloth that was sewn into a dress. I like that idea, though. Yeah, I like it too. Sarah got me strong. Bang! So yeah, I, I've played video games in my life. Thanks for asking. I have yeah. I have been known in my life to play a video game once or, or twice. Yeah. Occasionally. Yeah. You know. How it, do you feel about video games? Do you think they they are bad for the environment? Yes, because <laughs> video games use electricity, and electricity <laughs> is bad if you use too much of it for the environment. And is it bad for for kids nowadays? Yes. Video games are rotting children's brains. <laughs> I have a statistical study from a, a prestigious study. university that talks about how children do not have adequate nurturing from their parents because they video games. Hmm. <laughs> I'm trying to fix my dress, so just continue. <laughs> 
This is a this is an episode today, huh? Hi. This is a, this is interesting. I am worried about the existential threat of. <laughs> I'm worried about the existential <laughs> threat, tr- threat of video games for child's minds. We are in an entertainment war for the minds of childs. Childs. Yes, and we must keep them safe from the calls of duty. Ah. Uh. I do have empty teeth. What's wrong with that? Uh, yeah, he does have empty. I also have empty teeth. <laughs> hey guys, look at our teeth. <laughs> 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 Anyways, hi, welcome to Music Exposed. <laughs> it's true. The kids, it's what the kids are doing. I'm just saying, bring it back. I agree. We need to bring that back. I'm going to call, I'm going to call Northbound Matt and be like, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Yeah, it's it's the vampire effects. Yes, I, we did eat some victims in the catacombs before we came up here. Anyway, hi, a, welcome to Music Exposed. I already did that like 20 minutes ago. I welcomed oh. everyone to Music Exposed. Oh, you Exposed. did? Oh. Yes. Hello, this is a, this is a show. <laughs> hi. Hello. We're on the internet. Hi, <laughs> we broadcast. Hi, have you ever heard of the internet? It's like America Online. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, Does anybody even remember what those noises are? Mix a fit knows. Yeah. My my old school sounds people. Sounds like know what my, my facts. This sounds like your facts. facts yeah. <laughs> do you remember facts? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Actually, businesses <laughs> businesses still use modem. facts. That yes, the yeah, modem sound the modem is the sound. sound. That is the correct facts. sound. That is the correct. Now sound. take internet history for four hundred. Why am I? Okay, listen. Today, I'm not happy with anything today. She's not. I'm not happy. She's been with messing with her today. chair over and over yes, and over again. My chair is not making me happy today. I don't know what it is. Mom, hang up the phone. Mom, hang up the phone. I need to look at the internet and fact to prove. Okay, so let me ask you a question. Mm. Were you, when you were, since this is a music-related question. Sure. When you were young. Yeah. Did you ever partake in, you know, the the Napster? Did you ever Did you ever play with the Napster? Or if you were too young for that, the LimeWire or the BearShare or any of that stuff, Kazaa maybe. Did you ever partake in any of those services at any point? What is that? <laughs> what is you that never, you never saying? downloaded music back in the day? Oh, yes, Emule. Okay, so Emule was your thing. Yes. So what, what was the, what was your or... jam? What If you can remember back to those days, what was the, the song... What were the what were the songs or the types of music you were trying to download from that? Like what were your what were your things? Emule, I never heard of it either. I, I don't know. What were you what were it you downloading? It was called Emule, yeah. Emule. Yeah, it was Emule. We can't talk about this. Because <laughs> Emule is illegal. Never heard of it. I never heard of it. I don't know even what I'm talking about. Emule is a Mexican thing. Emule sucked. <laughs> I like that. No, listen. I'm asking, what type of music did you used to listen to back in those days? No, could you tell me, listen, sir, <laughs> could you tell me the specific times and dates that you engaged in illegal file sharing <laughs> and exactly what files and you what downloaded games? What games and to, too? And and to what computer you games downloaded them? I'm just taking notes for no reason. There's yeah, no actual reason I'm taking yeah. notes right now. Uh-huh. I'm just taking notes. Why is notes. your lawyer standing there? There's no reason. <laughs> no, but seriously, if you did that, what was the type of music you were listening to at the time? Like, did you have, like, what was your email jam that you never um, downloaded or didn't? I, I, just, I never downloaded, uh, yeah. I never downloaded Shakira. You never, da- Shakira, just, Shakira. Yeah, just Shakira's and. Shakira and, was your thing? Shakira she was, was. What was the Shakira song? What was your Shakira? No, it bomb? was it was albums. I would go. You downloaded an entire Shakira album. No, I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> that's the thing. I did not download them. Yes, that's, that's right. Thing. I did. I if bought you were, them all. If you theoretically, I them all. if you were I theoretically, if you were theoretically ever to do such a thing, yeah. 
What Shakira's albums or songs did you listen to? Like, what I was the Shakira bop? The, I don't remember the the names of the songs or or albums because I'm horrible at names. But they Justin were clearly Timberlake very memorable too. too. It's Shakira Justin was clearly Timberlake. very, very Justin Timberlake as well. Justin Timberlake too. Yeah, Justin. What Timberlake was the song was, though? She were, was over here dancing to Waka that? Waka. <laughs> no, that was before that. It was. That is true. That. I also pirated a lot of Maddie music. I've done that as well. Yeah. 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 I downloaded on Emule. Yeah, it's hard to remember things that you never downloaded. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. Like, I don't remember the things that I never downloaded. Yeah. yeah like, I never downloaded Justin Timberlake. Wait a minute, Wait a minute, Was I that never... the... I don't know. What the hell is a Shakira... What was a popular... What, what was a popular Shakira song other than that? Hmm. Did she have another popular she song? She had a lot of songs. She had a lot of I, I just know all of her songs are like... Oh, no, 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 no. That's like every in Shakira song to me. In the early 2000s, she had like a lot of things. But Justin Timberlake also in the early 2000s. And uh, who else? <gasps> when Lady Gaga came out, but that I actually bought. Wasn't I that did, I, wasn't that later though? That was like later, that, yes. That was not in the in the downloading days. But then all but then the thing is, very soon YouTube came around and I didn't have to not download things anymore that's because true. they were all available on YouTube. Well that's why I was saying, like I'm asking what your jams were. So Shakira and Justin Timberlake, those were your those were your no, downloading. The thing is jams. I would use those sites for other things than music. Like what? Is this the exposed portion? Do we need mom to plug I would her ears? Not, I would not download any movies or music or, or or games. No games. No games. Well, who is your favorite? I would never not, download Listen, games. who is your favorite non-music performer? Um, Probably <laughs> EA. EA. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah. EA was a good non-music performer that I really like to not download. Oh, I see. Uh -huh. I see. That's mm -hmm. exactly, Sarah's over here downloading Prawn. That was exactly what my guess was too. That's why I was asking her, but she's... I mean... EA I mean, does really good Prawn. If you remember Prawn. the old internet John Madden, days, listen guys, if you John Madden that, no, excuse you, does wait. the best Prawn. Excuse you, if you remember yes. the old internet days, you remember how long it took to even load one image. So you got to oh, download that shit. Just That's saying. right. She, everyone, everyone has been holding their breaths for John Madden Prawn to come out. Yeah. It's very important. He has a lot of tight ends. That's right. What about prong? Snap your finger, snap your neck. Yeah, so um, I would never do anything. That's right. Any. It's anything in the game. Illegal. It's in the game. I have never done anything illegal in my entire life. Stay in school, people. Yes. Kids, stay in school. Stay fresh. Stay legal. What's up? <laughs> What's up? What's up? I agree. I'm, so, <laughs> <laughs> I want chat to partake in the WhatsApp every time we. Yes, do it. every time. Can that, we please do that? You guys be are being thing. lame. Yeah. Okay, you guys are being lame. Let's do it again. What's up? What's up? Makes it fit. No. <laughs> That's. <laughs> I love the responses of everyone just, yeah. no. No, just no. <laughs> I appreciate those yeah. of you that are actually doing it. Just yeah. like, everyone else is like, no, we're not yeah. doing it. I don't understand why that went away, okay? It was a beautiful trend. I feel like, do you remember, okay, are you old enough to have had an actual physical answering machine? Did you yes. have a, did you have an answering machine? Yes. Did you? And used I to... used to record the most amazing things on it. That's what I was gonna troll, ask. And I used to call my siblings with such nonsensical things. Like when I knew they weren't at home, I would call them and fill that answering machine with such nonsense until the answering machine, like until the- You the literally fill the tape? I, yes. So you just sit on I, the answering yes, machine for an hour yes, and just- <laughs> Yes, that's what I would do. I would call them and be like, hey, blah, 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 complete nonsense. And then it would stop, right? And then you call again, yes. and you call again, and you call again. At some point, you can't call anymore. So when they come home, they have like I don't know, ten messages or something, and they're and they have to like listen. And to it's it. just nothing. It's, and just it's just nonsense. What were you talking about? What was nonsense? This? Like I would tell <laughs> stupid stories. Those are the original Sarah Jazz albums. Yes. <laughs> yes. She used to just call and play the saxophone on no, my the answering original, machine. My originals, actually, the first type of music that I did, I <laughs> wrote songs as a kid, but also, I did not only write songs as a kid, I also, get this, I would do DJing. So I would I put in the, a cassette 
right? Yeah. Into the, the recorder. Yeah. I put the cassette. I, when radio was playing, I would record that. And then on the on the chorus or whatever I wanted to DJ, like slash remix, I would record something from a CD or from a different song and then wait again until that song comes back in the on the radio <laughs> so I can finish the song. So nice. I would have things like I would have things like yeah. I would have things like um techno music, like doom 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 oomph, 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 right? And then in the mid and then the chorus would be some stupid country. Shakira. No, some country. stupid country. Oh, nice. Like really horrible, like trucker country. I got friends. Yeah, in exactly. Places. Mm, mm, yes, mm. and that's how I would. I, I was. I was really big on mixing stuff with my cassettes. I unfortunately don't own those cassettes anymore. But that's it a was lot. funny. That's a lot. It was a lot of work. Do you yeah. feel like that that anybody kept your answering machine messages that you left? No, them? I think everybody just was very annoyed by me, which is normal for me. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's. I. I understand. I understand that. Yeah, that yeah. was like the first, first like things that I did. They, there were no DAWs back then. You had no DAWs. Like you couldn't really remix or something. Like that was not Remember a thing. remix. That was not a thing. But that's how I would remix. Yeah. It was before Mister Mister Four One Five. It was before yeah. Pitbull. Yeah. Oh yeah, hundred percent. That was way before Pitbull. That was like I don't even know. What I was it is. like there I don't is. know nine or ten. Pitbull was. That's right. Was still a little, a Pip, little puppy. He was, he was still a puppy. He was still a puppy. <laughs> puppy pitbull. <laughs> puppy pitbull. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I yeah. agree. It's just a thing. I, I, well, I had dogs too. I grew up with dogs. That's. The I thing. mean, I definitely did that. I definitely did. I like that. I liked Psycho's comment earlier of why don't I have any friends? Oh, it's because I leave infinite messages for people. It's true. <laughs> that's why. That's fun fact. That's why she named her project Infinite Messengers. Yes, that's actually yes. That's very true. Why I named my project Infinite Messengers. <laughs> yeah, because I have no like... friends. I would always annoy my friends to death. Yeah. Like I wonder, even there's I wonder why no one would ever watch this Portugal, stream and think you're annoying. No one would ever think you were annoying in, ever. In Portugal there was a time there was a time I don't know if this is still a thing, but until I left, there was this thing which is um when you call somebody there is a song playing. Like when you God, when I hate that ring yeah. back tones. Yeah, yeah when I, I call that. you I still know of one person that no, has wait, that. When I call you it's like dude no, and the song is playing. I know. You I know who a, still has that to this day. Who still has that to this day is never Muse. Oh, he's really? probably not in the chat. He legit still has that. You call him and it plays a song to you, and it's like yeah, I think he stopped paying for it forever ago. <laughs> yeah. So now it's just like random classical music yeah. when you call him, and I'm oh like, oh my god! Okay. You know what I had? What? You know what I had? Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot from Snoop Dogg. And I, <laughs> and I would legit when somebody would call me, I would wait. I would wait a time. I would be like, I'm gonna let these people enjoy the song. I would legit. Wow, think you of just like end. you want them to be twerking yeah. on their end of the phone. Yes. You're like, yes. yes. I was legit like, oh, somebody is calling me, and this was my work phone by the way at the time. It was my work phone too. <laughs> it's and like, like Sony like, clients. Yes, You're like, yes. hey guys, listen to some Snoop before yeah. we get me. Okay. <laughs> listen to some Snoop before you have to talk business to me. I would legit like, wait, and I would be like, mm, I think they're like. That's I amazing. think they're they're at this part now. Hello. <laughs> yes. Yes, that was me. That sounds that sounds amazing. Yeah. I never I was, partook in that. Yeah, I was obnoxious even at work. Yes. yes. I was that I was that girl that would take stripper shoes to work to meetings. Like I would I would come up with like high heels, super thin, and like skulls on them or something. I would be like. And then, but then a suit. I would be like suited up. So you're up. like suicide girl? Yes. Suicide girl in a suit. Yes. I would be suicide girl in a suit. I would come like with those really high and not, and I would be, I would be, yes. My boss loved me though. The, the men loved me. <laughs> Gee, I wonder why. Yeah. Because I looked like a stripper in this. What's that? What's that? What's that? It's for a tablecloth suit. Yes. <laughs> it wasn't for your English, that's true. <laughs> Shut up, Seiko. <laughs> I'm just saying, guys, like, mm. yes, that's that's definitely what it was for. For her professional tact, okay? Yes, I was very professional. Let's do it, yes. Let's do it. That's where I came from. Yeah. That's where the catchphrase came from. Yeah. Was that. That's very that. true. Yeah. Yes. That's very true. So are you, uh, so, hi, welcome to Music Exposed. <laughs> <laughs> I did that, like, 40 minutes ago now. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, hi, welcome that. to Music Exposed. We talk about music here on the show. Tell, tell the, the I was audience, talking about music. Tell the audience what we talk about on the show. 
We talk about how video games are rotting the children's brains, and we need to protect them from the space lasers to keep their brains from being corrupted, because we all know that the space lasers are a very real and existential threat, and we must keep ourselves safe from them. It's true. Let's do it. Yes. Oh, we're definitely going to greet Alana Maddie with What's that? What's that? I think, what's that? I think, I think Alana Maddie is already like questioning Did she her life already? right now. I think Does she, she have a Discord message? Let me, in let me, look, at, let yeah. me look in the Discord. Yeah, okay. Um, yep, she, yep, oh, she that's did. Sad. Yeah, that's she sad. said, You guys are weirdos. I don't know. She's want like, to be You guys are weirdos. Sorry. Whoop, there it is. <laughs> Whoop, there it is. Whoop, there it is. You guys, uh, like it's hot. Yeah, that yeah. was really poor delivery. <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> drop you guys hot. That was horrible. That was the most that horrible really, delivery I've really ever good. had in my life. I you, like it. Would you believe that I actually do comedy? No. <laughs> oh, yeah, right? Yeah. I no, it. it's because you're not wearing stripper shoes. Oh, I'm wearing just socks. If you were wearing. <laughs> They go She's really like, well with my my dress. pretty dress and socks. <laughs> and, and, have, and sometimes <laughs> she wears socks and flip flops. Yeah, I have those beautiful. Do you guys want to see? I'm pretty sure you guys want to see. Me. Yes, the music show wants to yeah. see you. Yes. Show your stupid slippers. Listen, my slippers are dad slippers. My slippers are beautiful slippers, and they're beautiful. Sorry. <laughs> what? <Did> I... <laughs> That was almost toss. I'm so sorry. What? I almost bumped trying my to motor boots me? into like, your face. Yeah, I know. I get it. And that's pretty toss. Oh, wait. I've You're just like me. motorboat. You probably need to be careful I'm lifting doing your this, dress like this. Like, I'm doing this. Oh, uh, okay. Look, guys. Do you like it? Anyways, what were we talking? Oh, hi. Welcome to Music Exposed. We talk about music here. I, I still did that already. I oh. did that portion of the show when you were doing whatever you were doing. Pot has a vagina. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, guys, I'm very excited. I, I was trying you. to talk about music topics, oh, and I'm you sorry. just like, no. I haven't told you this yet, but I have made a decision. Oh. Um, uh, <laughs> An executive decision, decision yes. about the show that, no, I'm, that I, I work on? No, I've made a decision for the other show. So on the 13th or 18th? I thought 13th. we were doing the, yeah. the German thing yeah. next week. Oh, I thought we were doing Labia's Exposed. Why am I on the show? I don't even know. Wait, are we not doing Labia's Exposed? You can do whatever you want. Oh, we're Have doing your German that. thing? Oh, we're doing your German thing. Okay, no, that's No, we're doing Labia's no, Exposed, No, we can do Labia's Exposed at some other point. No, I get, what is the decision you made for Labia's Exposed? I already have a few people that I want to invite. Okay. Rene Rosa. He wants to be part of Labia's, Labia's Exposed. Labia's Exposed, yes, he did I say that. I'm pretty sure... We need Renee Rosa Matt. to actually be on Music Exposed at some point, so... Yes. I'm pretty sure Northbound Matt would love to be on Labia's Exposed. Petfest wants to be on Labia's Exposed. Petfest is too busy working out. You... <laughs> very... And counting proteins. Mm -hmm. And you want to be on, 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 on Labia's Exposed. I don't. I don't want to be on Labia's Exposed. You're going to be the, 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 the host of... I don't want to be the host of it. You're going to be the special... Hi guys, uh, a big sport. announcement. The host of Labia's Exposed will be the silence noise. Claps. No, I don't want to do this. I have publicly just announced that you can't do anything against it. Uh, yes, I can, I can just not come in the studio that day. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna release a new show called Slipper Dicks. I wanna be on, <laughs> come on, who wants to be on Slipper Dicks? <laughs> I, I feel like that has to be with the southern accent. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Slipper Dicks. I wish I could. I this mean, this silence, slipper dick is the largest silence. slipper dick I've ever caught on the river. It is a wonderful slipper dick, and it almost slipped away because it's slipper. Yeah. So if you are a streamer and you want to be on Labia's Exposed, <laughs> please sign up. It's going to be at some point in February. I don't know when yet, but at some point. Or Noodling with silence. It's going to be, it's called Labia's Exposed, and it is what the name says. Yes, it has exactly nothing to that. do with being a man or a woman to be no, on Labia's Exposed. Of course. This it's is, not music exposed, it's Labia's exposed. I, I was saying, oh. I did say that. No. Thanks. So, for this. Cafe Sparrow, do you want to be on Labia's exposed? Why is this a thing? What is this, Labia's? Um, Labia's. It's a thing. What are Labia's? Please explain to the chat. Ladies, she's saying Gepo Lilipo. Just listen to it correctly. Gepo Lilipo. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> uh, my chat was requesting. So, you trolled me now. 
because you sent everybody in my chat today and everybody in my chat like, where's Sarah? Where's Sarah? Because in Sarah's ugly, I'm just gonna call it Sarah's ugly stream because your stream the other day was just you whining for hours about how you feel like you're ugly now, mm. even though you're not. But apparently you've lowered your standards to be with me. That's the good news. She's like, I'm ugly, but at least I can be with you now. You're wonderful for me. But I'm just saying, you know, that's fine. She's ugly, but during that, she she complained that no one comes into my chat and asks for Sarah. That's not they true. only come into Sarah's chat. That isn't true anymore because everybody that came into my chat today is like, where is Sarah? Where is Sarah? And I was doing a pretty serious stream today and everyone's like, I, that's where not is my, Sarah? It's I not this. my fault that chat fault. has no, it's not my fault that chat has absolutely no tact. That is not my fault. I did not tell them next time, tell them that. Maybe Ugly I Enough for Silence is a new reality point. dating show. I would love to, I would love to be on that show. I would love to be on an ugly competition reality <laughs> show. That would be phenomenal. I would do that in a heartbeat. I'm just saying, yes. You she is always complaining about tact. something. That I is true. I learned from you, Psycho, just saying. That is true. I, I'm just... Um, I, what are labias? My mom is asking. Just tell her. I'm not explaining that to your mother. Explain that <laughs> yourself. You guys are the ones... Listen. Sarah Jazz and Mum Jazz talk about penises at the dinner table. Just so that if you guys are ever wondering what the behind breakfast the scenes table. thing is. Breakfast table. At the breakfast worried. table. Sorry, I just needed to. Sarah and Mum talk about dicks. Dicks. Hi, welcome to Music Explodes. This is a show <laughs> where we talk about music. Yes. I am Sarah Jazz. I am a professional musician. I am now a full-time streamer on Twitch. I do music, comedy, and games, and mostly variety, but also nonsense. Hi, this is my host and co-host, The Silence Noise, who I today um, said is the hottest uh, host This is my ever. host and co-host. This is my so host So I'm both a host and a co-host. Oh. Yes. What's up? What's up? I do music, comedy, gaming, and dicks. You do dicks? That's what I'm saying. Oh. Yeah, I just don't talk about them at the dinner table. I'm just saying. Did you, that's very true. So we were having breakfast and my mom and I were talking about circumcised penises. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. We were talking about- True story, chat. True and we story. Talking, and we were wondering, and this started because I asked at the, at the breakfast table, I was like, I wonder if in Europe they immediately circumcise the penis when the baby gets born, even if you don't do it for religious reasons, right? And then my mom and I started talking about it. <laughs> that's basically right, Northbound Matt. My mom is dead circumcised. That's a, <laughs> no, I don't want to know that. I don't, no, you weirdo. Oh my god. Fuck you, weirdo. That's of course not how it went. I don't want to know that. Yes. It started with a vice versa. It did. So they were they were eating. So my dad was teaching. Dicks, dick sucking my sausage. dad was teaching uh, Silence how to That's suck step sausage. Brother, no. <laughs> he was teaching him how to suck sausage. He was. Yeah. He didn't teach me. So, I, 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 her I, dad I, taught me. <laughs> Listen, her dad told me taught me how to suck sausages. <laughs> And what's up? 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 So he so was teaching him because we had sausage for dinner. How do you say breakfast. suck sausage in Portuguese? That's important. Um, chupar salsicha. Como chupar salsicha. In Portuguese, that's horrible. That's actually this is not good. But anyway, Why is that not good? But he, we were, he was teaching you. Chupar a salsicha? <laughs> And um, so the, so this, this is the thing. In, in, in Bavaria, you have to suck the sausage. It sounds like a so celebrity. Out of the yes, skin. I love Chuparo Masalsicha. <laughs> really good musician. I appreciate when they get flamenco. Ay, ay, ay. What's up? What's up? Um, anyways, uh, um. <laughs> So he was teaching Silence, my dad was teaching Silence how to suck the sausage out of the skin, basically. Yes. And yes, Silence and well, had yeah, a this little is true bit, story. Silence had ate a little bit of the sausage and the skin was flapping in the front. So I saw that and thought, ah, penis. And 
So I turned around and said and asked my mom and my dad. I was like, so <laughs> while we were eating, so <laughs> looked at his his plate and was like, so do people <laughs> circumcise the <laughs> baby's penises in Germany um, or in Europe for... <laughs> Y'all's breakfast for, is very different than mine. I agree. <laughs> you know? So that's what I asked. And my, my mom, my dad was like, he didn't even answer. He doesn't even... Your dad, answer. you know what I love about dad, Jazz? He legit just ignores when crazy shit happens. Like crazy shit will be happening and he's just, he's in his own lane. He's in his own world. Just does not even acknowledge it. Yeah. Just goes right past it. He does, yeah. He does. So, so, and then my mom and I started talking about circumcised penises. It's true. Yeah. I've never had dick for breakfast either. Yeah, <laughs> Germany is pretty weird. You, you, you raised have, Sarah. You have dick for breakfast in yeah. Germany. It's it's a common thing. Una dica. <laughs> Una dica. Una dica. You know, mm. yes. Dica. Yeah. So, um, hi, welcome to Music Exposed. <laughs> this is where we talk about music. This is a show, a talk show. So who are you? I already explained who I am. Tell us who you are. Hi, I'm the Silence Noise. I'm the future host of Labia's Exposed. <laughs> <laughs> which is a show that's on this channel when Music Exposed should be on. And you'll be tuning in hoping for Music Exposed, but then you'll be talking about Labia's. Back to you, Tom. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and so now for weather. and now for Russ with the weather. <laughs> the weather is going to be very very um, foggy here on this side and very bright on this side. Will it, will it be bright on the window pane? Since window pane is a song that's playing right now. It's not anymore. What? <laughs> 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 Music. Can someone start keeping count of how many times she's introduced the show? <laughs> it's been at least 10 at this point. I'm just saying. Yeah. So, um, so. I'm like, learning so much about the music. the piece they today. cut off of the dick. No, that's not the labia. <laughs> the labia is the piece they cut off the dick. <laughs> no, that's not. Somebody in chat, exposed. please explain to my mom what a labia, what labias are, please. I like oh, it. It's God. just a meme introducing the show. I think it should be counted. I think it's very important. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and now, Tom, what sports? <laughs> Why are we so stupid today? I, I'm We're stupid every day. Stupid. What is, what is like, new? Sports. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, type 69 in chat if you feel like this show has gotten stupider and stupider each week. Like, I feel like we were... This show is stupid from the get-go. But it was like, never two this stupid. Yes, it was. No. Two months into the show, we had a subplot about Crowboat locking me in a closet and me coming out covered in bugs. <laughs> Do you not remember okay. this? I this remember. show has always been stupid. <laughs> we talked about Dora fighting people in the first month of the show. Like, this show has always been stupid. It is, it is. I remember it, one of the first shows you talked about snorting cocaine off my ass and we weren't even dating. That's true. Then. That was, but then the infamous episode the where I talked about, the way, I, Alana, have you, uh, when I was talking about how streamers need to sell mouth and tongue molds of themselves, especially oh, the yay, music streamers, true. that was, that was very important. I was very uncomfortable by it. I, I, I love how you're uncomfortable about that, but then you're like, I don't mind talking about my breakfast table dick conversations now. No, I was But talking about streamer tongue molds. Because I was not, we were not, like, you were just my friend, and my friend was talking about making a mold from my vagina. I was not that talking was about- weird. I did not talk about your vagina, yeah, you first of all. And I talked, talked about, about streamer my mouth ass. molds. You talked about my vagina and my I ass, and not. we weren't even dating. He's a weirdo. Not. You're a perfect. Hi, welcome to Music Exposed. This is a show where we talk about music. What's up? I did not. Uh, I did not talk about any of that. No. Oh. Uh, I talked about how streamers need to make music streamers for additional revenue need to make molds of their mouths and their tongues mm. because that's what the people want to buy. They want to buy that, tongues. They do. I, I would, everyone wants, listen, Alana Maddie probably has a nice tongue, okay? Oh my god. That's why we had is, her on the show. What this, is wrong with you? What did you have you for breakfast today? Listen, breakfast stick. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just stop. I'm sorry, Alana. I fucking apologize. Listen, in, Canadians, in Canadians, face. what's wrong with that? I mean, it's an okay tongue, kind of small. Sarah uh, has a midget tongue, so that doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't help. You guys true. both can compare your tiny tongues. 
See, she's doing her best to make it look big, even though she has kind of a tiny tongue. I'm sure Alana Manny has a great tongue. Listen, chat, who do you think is the guest that had the best tongue on Music Exposed? <laughs> Who's had the best tongue on Music Exposed? I would say or is Ed it Plays me? Jazz has the best Who? tongue because Ed Plays Jazz. <laughs> because Ed Plays Jazz is a saxophonist. All saxophonists know Alice. to work, they know <laughs> like, to oh, work yes. their tongue. Yes. Alice uh, has a Patreon now. Go subscribe to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good advertising. Music Exposed. Go subscribe to Alice Little Alien's Patreon. And to my Patreon, I also have a Patreon. I, I don't have a Patreon, but I have that other site. The only farmers? I have, yes. What do you show there? Everything. 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 I can't play any instruments that use a reed because my tongue doesn't know how to do the thing. Yeah. Yeah. But I bet that's that makes it more valuable when you're selling your Twitch music community streamer tongue mold, which is very important for the people in the music community. Like, it's like Pokemon. you got to catch them all. It's like, hey, guys, I just got Alana Manny's tongue mold, and tomorrow I have... You know, Hi. Chain Brain. <laughs> chain Brain's tongue mold is coming in tomorrow. And then the day after that, just... Miss Mary Lou's tongue mold will come in. And then I'll make them all go, Wah! 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 Wait, have, wait well, will we have, um, will we have, you know what? We need a will we have, you know what? Chop. We need a music exposed chop. Chop? Chop. We need a music exposed shop. We need chop. a music exposed shop where we where we sell molds of a all lot of Maddie. You don't want to know. You don't want to know what people do with them. You just don't want to. Of all the guests, we want we sell. I like how you're like, signing me up for a shit ton of work. You're yeah. like, yes, I would like you to build a store with all of the merch from all of the streamers that have been on the show. No, not merch. No, the tongue molds. Oh well, yeah, I can do that. That's all. I can saying. set up the store for that. Yeah, tongue molds. Not merch not their merch no they can sell their own yeah shit. they can sell their own merch but they we can, can sell the tongue molds i agree no the tongue molds of every streamer mm -hmm. so this is from now on for every streamer that comes on this show this is we're going to send you some plaster to put in your yes. mouth for like 10 minutes yeah so that'll be part of the music and exposed welcome kit will now come with plaster cast for your mouth yeah, and you need to do it because otherwise you will not be a guest on the show because we need to But if you don't, then you can, instead, you can opt to be on Labia's Exposed and you can plaster cast other parts of you. Yeah, you can pl plaster cast your labia. If you don't own a labia, <laughs> you can do your testicles. Welcome to Music Exposed, <laughs> the show about music. We're so glad that you could all be here today for this show. I'm Sarah Jazz. And this is my co-host, who are you? Hi, I'm The Silence Noise, and I have a lot of memes on my channel. I am an all original, amazing, and very unique rock, prog rock artist. Prog and, rock. And we, prog -rock. I started in... I'm a, I'm a prog rock. When did you start? I started in 1999. Ah, I started in 1999, and I'm now back with more amazingness. The Silence Noise. Follow me now. <laughs> I need to, someone clip that. I need to use that as the beginning of my of my stream someday. That was very good. I liked the thumbs up and I, I liked like that I also like to hear, hear Alana Manny in the background. Um, 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 <laughs> um, um. She's also, yeah, yeah. I like that. She's providing a soundtrack that people she can is. hear, which I enjoy that. Yeah. It's like being in a in an episode of Babar, yeah. because there's like little music that's, that's playing along. Yeah. And then Silence was... Introducing yeah. himself on stream. She, I, could, I she could now whisper sweet nothings into our ear and we, please do She's gonna be like we, we, I have a nice tongue And we you guys wouldn't be able to She's like it. this song is called a song for my tongue <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes, they can hear it. I, they can hear yeah, it now they can. <laughs> That makes it even better. Anyways, I actually have to go into the into the thing to do the thing. I have to go so, into the uh, just, thing just to do the thing. Them, tell them where we are. Hi, welcome to Music Exposed. I'm your host, Sarah Jazz. I've been on fucking tour. What have you <laughs> been doing with your life? Clearly not that much. Clearly you've been sitting around watching dumb shows on the internet about, you know, labias and, and weird stuff like streamer tongue molds and all that kind of stuff. It's very strange. I don't know why that's what you, where you've been choosing to... Spend your time, but that's clearly what you do on the internet. I don't clean my reads. I, I just, I do, okay? Why, why don't you start this up at the beginning of the show? Why do you wait until the guest is here? Because... I, I like, because you weren't here, that's right. Because I was, first legit of all... weren't here. Because first of all, I wasn't here. 
And second of all, I just no. You just like you know? second of all, no. Yes. That's beautiful. Just, That's a great reason. I wasn't here. I was making drinks. Cheers. 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 Chat. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. What's up? What's up? Hi, I'm Sarah Jazz. I talk about music that I used to play in Dick's Benedict. Dick's Benedict. <laughs> I'm not awkward. You are. Give, Give me money. money. That's true. Give me money, please, guys. All the, also, don't forget. <laughs> don't forget. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> Don't yes. forget to uh, support this uh, music show because Don't forget to support Don't forget to support Sarah needs English Don't lessons. Support. Please support her Duolingo English lessons <laughs> to be able to properly speak English. Never forget. Never forget to give me money. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Never forget. <laughs> Never forget. Never forget to give me money. Yes. Yes. Cool. That's great. Cool. Support our channel. I'm Jazzy Sarah. What's up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> yes. I agree. She needs to learn some more languages. You know, she needs to learn Russian. <laughs> <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very excited to actually have a phenomenal today of all days with this being as stupid as it is. We have a fantastic songwriter and musician here, actually, who is now petrified, I'm sure, to be on this show. Yes. But I'm so grateful to have her here. I just discovered her recently, and I feel a lot of regret because I wish I had discovered her before. She is incredible. She is. Um, I'm amazing. very much hoping she's going to play some originals for us. But she has some amazing songs. A lot of money! Oh, my God. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> uh, I don't even know how to follow that. Hi, my name is Lana Maddie. Uh, I am a singer songwriter from Toronto, Canada. What's up? <laughs> I can't do it as well. Uh, can everyone hear me? Is everyone? Yes, we can hear I've, you. I've, okay, cool. We can hear um. You. <gasps> Um, <laughs> um, I'm going to play a couple of original tunes for you. Um, this is a song about not wanting to go to the wedding for someone that you used to be romantically involved with. And whenever I play this song live, when shows used to be a thing, um, RIP, uh, people would like have mixed reactions to it because some people would be like, oh, that's so sad. And then other people would be like, that's hilarious. So um, it's up to you. You can decide how you feel about it. Uh, this is called The Big Day. Well, I don't think I can go to your wedding. Just to hear them play our song We may not have been meant to be But we were for far too long You should know that I want you to be happy Wish you all the best of luck We may not have been meant to be But I just don't give a fuck mm -hmm. I'm sure the bride will be lovely And I'm sure your mother will cry I'm just not ready to take that dream and say I don't think 
I can go to your wedding Just to hear the vows you speak If you need a shoulder, you know where I'll be Just don't save me a seat Turn up my headphones. <clears throat> Try not to knock things over on my desk. Thank you guys for the claps. I see, I see some friendly names. Um, <clears throat> it is true, some people have mentioned. I am releasing a vinyl, wow. You can pre-order it now. Shameless self-promotion. Not uncomfortable about it at all. Um, anyway, I'm gonna play, <laughs> I'm gonna play another song. Um, specifically because both Sarah and uh, The Silence Noise have played this song on their channels, which I have to say real quick before they can interrupt me. I know they can interrupt me whenever they want, but you know what, we're gonna pretend they can't. Um, is that it never gets freaking old. It never gets old hearing other people play like songs that you've written and like if whether they're like like adding solos or like playing sax on it, like it never gets old. It's so cool. It's just like the craziest, craziest feeling. Um, and you guys are both such talented musicians that it's just wicked. It's, it's just, ah, it's just, it's just cool. Anyway, um, this is a song called A Song For My Love. It's a big song, and I'm not really sorry about that, um, but it's one of my favorites, even if it is kind of old at this point. What's up? I can't do the Zoom thing, so you're just gonna have to picture it. My 
love don't lie to me hey tell me where did you sleep last night i'm tired of all the lies and i'm tired of thinking through my love well i'm tired of you Do you want to do another one? Sure. Yes. <laughs> that was awesome, by the way. We, we, we love it. Thank you. Sorry for the barks. <laughs> um, all right. We'll do, we'll do one. Do you guys want, like, do you guys want a bop or do you want, like, a mellow vibe? What y'all want? Uh, do a bop do since a bop. the last one was yeah. mellow. Let's you did the mellow. Up. Now we need the bop. We'll do this. Uh, this is a song called uh, Loose Change. Uh, it's a bop. Let's see if Clive uh, barks along. I doubt it. Hold on. I just need to make sure I'm not in imminent danger. Hold on one sec. In the interim. What's that? What's that? No, never mind, never mind. I am not in imminent danger. We're good. Anyway. <laughs> and have you ever felt the same? Well, would you be too afraid to say? And if I ever told you why I could not say goodbye, I wouldn't even try. I just give myself away. And if you ever felt the shame, well, would you be too afraid to say, or would you just run away with me if I told you about the days that we could spend together? of me to be that much better, better now, whoa, whoa. And 
Did you ever lose your brain? I say, did you ever feel it change in you? Did you ever want to know your place? Did you ever want to feel disgrace? Did you ever want to know your place? Did you ever want to feel disgrace? Did you ever want to run? Did you run? And why must I stay the same while everyone around me changes? Is it expecting of me to be that much better? Better? I've got one more thing I've got to say to you. Give me a chance, you know I've got to have a few And can you help me now? And can you help me now? Cause I gotta know Why must I say the same While everyone around me changes? Why must I say the same While everyone else can change? so much to all of you who contribute to this bulletin board every week obviously as since I pronounce her name I was pronouncing it right before and I switched to the wrong name because it's Alana and then I switched back to Alana and I thought I was wrong saying Alana and I always said Alana confused. but you started saying Alana so I, I don't like, know what happened it's... listen I don't even know I'm too important to know who the guests are on this show. <laughs> I'm a very popular oh streamer. I'm very busy, okay? I'm not on tour, but I am soon to be on tour, so I'm very important. The big Sarah How Paris, would I even know who streamers are? No, I'm just kidding. But obviously, um, as we get closer to that, for those of you who are here that are supporters of Alana Maddie, please let me know as we get closer to the release date or when we have pre-save links for that album. I did see a release notice, but I saw it was way out. Like, it was quite a ways out because I share all the new releases and all the new music here on the bulletin board. So as always, thanks to our contributors for this. People send me stuff every single week. You can send it to me on Discord or Twitter. And if you like hearing about new streamer releases and finding out about new music streamers, 
There are three places all of you need to go. The first is Five Hit Dunes Twitch Finds. Every Sunday, uh, Johnny and Dune do Twitch Finds where they find brand new Twitch music streamers, people that you've never seen before, uh, people that are brand new to the platform. And so they do that every Sunday afternoon. You can check that out. It's also on the bulletin board link. Then there is the Eargasm who does music reviews and song reviews every week. So you'll want to check that out. And finally, our biggest contributor normally uh, is Glasswegian and his blog. I know that a bunch of us have been interviewed by him for his blog and he provides us with new releases every week. So if you want to hear new music there is no excuse you've got this bulletin board and you've got those three things so make sure that you go find out what the new musicians are doing and this is actually a huge week for me because other glow finally after all this time just finally dropped his new album gray sky i am so excited for that for any of you who don't know other glow he is an amazing artist he's been working on this on this now for a couple of years i believe He's been playing some of these at least as long as I've been streaming. He's been working on and playing a lot of these songs. And it is finally here. There are so many amazing songs. And he did a bunch of collaborations with a variety of Twitch musicians. The ones off the top of my hand that I remember are Four After Ever, uh, Jay Dublé, and Devolta. But I know there's more collabs on there that I'm forgetting. But make sure you go check out Other Glow's new album, Gray Sky. You can get that on Bandcamp or all the streaming services. So go listen to that. Uh, and if you don't follow Other Glow, twitch.tv slash Other Glow. And hopefully someday he'll change his mind and be on the show. But I don't know after watching this most recent show. Also, Paul the Brave, a.k.a. Paul Grant, just dropped his new EP this week, Bright Ideas and Bad Influences. You can get that on all the streaming services and the link on the musicexposed.show site leads to the hyperfollow link, so you can go listen to that on your favorite music service. Searsha just dropped a surprise new track yesterday. Her new track is called Blame. You can pick that up on her Bandcamp. She released it for Bandcamp Friday yesterday. And also, for those of you um, who don't know, the first Friday of every month is currently Bandcamp Friday. And so all musicians on Bandcamp get 100% of the proceeds of all of the sales on the first Friday of the month. And hopefully that'll last for a while, but that's why a lot of people drop tracks on the Friday on Bandcamp Fridays. Then we have a couple of pre-saves that just came out. I don't know how to pronounce this. I think it's Swayzon, but Swayzon has a new album that is coming out on February 12th, so in just a couple of days. That's called Alien, and it's twitch.tv slash Swayzon, S-U-E-Z-A-N. So Swayzon. And finally, which a lot of it's us have been- Susan. Is it Susan? It's just is, Susan. Is it Susan? <laughs> That's Susan. a weird way to spell Susan. Uh, she is, uh, I don't remember where she's, I think she's from the Netherlands, but- I like it. It's Susan. Susan. Yeah. Well, there you go. Susan. I don't know. It's not Sw it's Susan. Swayzon. <laughs> Patrick Swayze. Swayzon. That is a Swayzon. <laughs> and then finally, last but not least, uh, on March 5th, Wax Wayne and Mike Shinoda are dropping the single that they just produced for him. It was a big deal for Wax. Uh, and Sarah Jazz's favorite streamer, Wax, who's somehow doubting that, has his new single, The Way Down, that's coming out. But you can pre-save that right now. And it is incredibly important, I mentioned this on the show before, that if people have pre-save links, uh, to click those and do the pre-save thing. It really helps people get uh, playlist traction and get more plays when the song is released. So a lot of people are like, ah, pre-save link, it's not important. It actually really helps the artist, especially on Spotify. So if you have the two seconds to click the link and pre-save something by an artist that you like, make sure that you do that. So Other Glow, Paul Grant, AKA Paul the Brave, Searsha, Susan, and Wax Wayne and Mike Shinoda. Yeah. That is this week's Music Exposed. Thank bar. you so much. The silence lines are clapping for yourself. I love that. I'm not clapping for myself. I'm clapping for all the amazing artists oh, on the bulletin board. For the amazing artists. And no yes, one, no and one yes can you me. believe that he is that he is that he is fucking doubting my my love for 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 him? For the for Wax Wayne, he's doubting my love. I can't. Wax even. Wayne is yeah. doubting your love. Yeah. He Listen, is. she likes Wax Wayne more than me. Like, let's let's be clear. We I all want you way more than him, though. That doesn't mean anything. But I want like, you more. It's like you more too, maybe you so eat McDonald's. Song. Listen, maybe you eat McDonald's more than caviar, but you love the caviar more. I'm just saying. That's because I'm you broke. Look. Anyways, hello, <laughs> welcome to Music Exposed. We have a beautiful, amazing guest today, and but who are I you? Wanna... If we're doing the <laughs> hi, welcome to Music Exposed. I'm Sarah Jazz. Yeah. We're introducing and I'm the show the again. Noise, and we have a beautiful guest. What? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna introduce her now. Here is Alana. 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 You like pronounce Alana your names correctly. Daddy. Hello. Hi. 
Mama Sam! Mama Sam! I'm so excited to have you. I, I was so telling the truth. I'm to be here. I love, I was telling the truth about when I first discovered your stream and I came in and I think we raided you. Someone suggested to raid you and we went in and you, so I got a song request for the raid. You played that song, a song for my love, and I legit went out and I sent it to all my friends. He did. Like, I legit DM'd it. I'm like, everyone needs to listen to this song right fucking now. And like, and then she played it on stream probably an hour after that. It was yeah. very, very short order after that. She's like, oh my God, this is amazing. I'm going to play it on stream. And then, I, and then, but yeah, I posted it in my Discord uh, and, and just, I'm so impressed by your songwriting. And then obviously hearing more of your originals, it's just so exciting. So I want to start with that. What inspired you to become a songwriter and how did that start for you? When did you start writing your first originals? And uh, was it inspired by other artists or did you just kind of start doing it on your own? Um, <laughs> it's kind of a dumb story. I'm just Sweet. gonna warn you right now. Uh, so y'all are familiar with Vanessa Carlton, a la yes. A Thousand Miles. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah, precisely. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Making my um, way through the hood with yes. the cat. <laughs> no ass fitting to get shot. Bow, 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 bow. <laughs> you got it. You nailed it. Yeah. Yes. So that exactly the way you just sang it is yeah. the reason why I started writing. Really? Songs. Oh my god, I can't. That's amazing. Um, yes. I was uh, I was at a friend's house and like I'd been playing piano already and I heard his sister like down the hall playing that song on piano and I was like, wait. You could play songs that aren't just like classical music on <laughs> piano. It was like I was I love in grade that. four. I was like, "What? This is cr what?" And like, literally went to my piano teacher like that following week, and I was like, "I want to do this." She's like, "Okay, but you got to pass your like exams first. I'm like, "Fine, I don't care." So I passed my exams, <laughs> um, and she bought me the sheet music. And so I learned how to play that song, and then I just played that song over and over again. But then I started learning stuff by ear. Okay. Nice. So like a lot of like any, it was a lot of piano rock at this time, like the early 2000s, I guess. Um, a lot of like Coldplay and Five yes. for Fighting and Train and. Okay, so that's I, I, I'm not, that I, I hate can to interrupt, up. but I have to because Coldplay is a controversial topic on the show. So you is are it? saying, oh no, you're saying that you enjoy Coldplay. Oh no. Do you I enjoy the Coldplay? Answer to this question is there. No, there um, is. What, no, there it, is. It, <laughs> I mean, there there is because what you, is, it's uh, always going to be fifty percent right. Just saying, yes, you know. It's fifty percent. Oh, okay. Right. I enjoy old Coldplay. See, Does yes. that make me a dick? Thank you. No, <laughs> I'm on your side. I'm on your oh, side. Oh yeah, I chose right. <laughs> everything. You chose everything against Sarah, which is always the best side. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. I'm, everybody I, always chooses against me. So. Uh, I'm, I'm, everything I'm, I'm not pre. Crying. Was it? Is it? Milo slot. Yeah, Milo Zilato or whatever. Yeah, yeah, whatever that one is. Everything pre that. Every, I guess everything up to Viva La Vida, I'm like, yep. so good. And then everything after that, I'm like, I don't care anymore. 100% agree. 100% agree. Um, yeah. And they still had but some yes. stuff in there. Like, I always agree. They had some stuff in there that was not great. Like, there, not every album was great. And a lot of the radio play stuff got really annoying after a while because of the overplay. But I agree, the albums before were all amazing. Oh my God, Frisk and Worth, old play. Old yes, play, yes. old play. <laughs> we are all, yes. I want to continue with that song actually because I just we just love that song. It's and and, and chat. Some people in chat said that they're that's their favorite song, um, of yours by by far. And for me, it's one of the best originals um, on Twitch. And just I just like to listen to it anyways. Um, uh. Tell me, tell me how you wrote that song. What's the story behind it? Um, tell me everything about that song. Okay, um, <laughs> uh, uh, that song was written in in pieces. Um, I had kind of the main the main riff done, and I uh, and then I actually worked with. There's a Canadian band called the Sky Diggers. I don't expect anyone to know who that is, but oh, they I exist. totally know them. No. Oh. Um, uh huh. Yeah, Don't. absolutely. Yes. Um, <laughs> but at the time, I was taking lessons with their keyboard player, and so I brought the song to him, and I was like, "Hey, like, I've got this whole song. Like, what do you think of it?" Um, and I had like the lyrics and everything, and the the bridge, which is like the high, yeah, 
the high part. I didn't really have anything for that yet. Um, and he like busted out. He's like, oh, I have this like I have a great idea. And he busted out this book um, that he had for some reason of old like folk tunes. Hmm. Um, and so like that part is um, it's been used by a bunch of by a bunch of different artists. But it's a it's a I don't know if it's a story or a poem, but it's called In the Pines. Oh. Um, so usually it's In the Pines, In the Pines Where the Sun Never Shines, I Would Shiver the Whole Night Through. And so yeah. I changed it to You Were Mine, You Were Mine. Um, but it was a, it was kind of a wicked, a wicked little kind of throwback. But that song is about, a lot of people think it's like a very angry song about someone that you were like in love with or someone that you're like sick of. But it's actually like a song like to yourself. So like when you're saying, you know, like I'm, I'm tired of my love, it's not about tired of like a person who is your love. It's like I'm tired of the love that I possess. I'm tired of my love going into the wrong directions and making oh. me do stuff that I don't want to do. Mm -hmm. And like, 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 it's almost like there's like a part of you that like you don't necessarily trust. So like in the, the second verse is like, my love, my love, don't lie to me. Where did you sleep last night? And it's like when you like... I don't know, you do something that you regret and you wake up the next morning and you're like, what the fuck? Like, why? How did I end up here? And it's just like, you know, you're blaming yourself and your own impulses um, and just kind of be like, I don't want to fall in love. I don't want to do this. This yeah. isn't this isn't what I want. But like, you know, you're kind of like your heart or your your emotions are, are doing something that you're not fully in control of, I guess. Now is that written? I love that. That makes me that makes me want, like the song even more. I love that. I don't know. One <laughs> of the things, legit. and and it's I amazing. find I kind of had that interpretation from listening to it because for me, I know what's interesting about having Sarah and I host the show. That's so interesting is Sarah is more of an instrumentalist yeah. and focuses on the melodies and focuses on the music, and I'm more of a lyricist. Even though I'm a composer, I'm more of a lyricist, and so for me, I dialed into that, and and, and yeah, I think. Do you find, as a songwriter, because as you mentioned, you've already heard people's various interpretations of it, do you find yourself more curious about what people's interpretations are of your lyrics, and do you kind of discover things about your songs or about yourself based on the interpretations that people bring you, or do you kind of stay solid to like, all right, I wrote this, and I kind of know what it's about, and I know what it is for me, and it, with, and it retains that meaning, or is it something that evolves for you over time as people give you feedback on that song? It definitely evolves. And I think that's something, at least for myself, when I'm writing songs, I so rarely write them about like a specific thing or right. about like a specific event. And so when someone else is able to say like, oh, this song makes me feel a certain way or it makes me think about this thing that happened in my life, I'm like, that's amazing. That's perfect. Like yes. that having that connection, having that person being able to say like, oh, I can take this and apply it to my own life, it makes this like crazy connection that, you know, something that I wrote because it was, you know, important to me. It was like a story that I wanted to tell or a feeling that I wanted to get out and to have someone else that I've never met somewhere say, I connect so much to the words that you say is yeah. like the best feeling. It, I, can, like, I can't <laughs> describe it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. And that's something for, for all viewers and listeners. Um, if you actually feel like that about a song that you hear about a, a musician that you can be in contact with, like on Twitch, for example, yeah. let them know, like yes. tell them, tell them, um, yes. I, I, I relate to the song because it makes me think about something in my life or I, mm -hmm. you know, just let them know because, uh, musicians want to know those things and it makes them, oh, feel, for sure. it makes them feel amazing. It yeah. does. And I, and like today, yeah. for example, I was talking about that on stream because I mentioned this and, and I'm only going to mention it shortly here. A very good friend of mine and early supporter of the music uh, passed away last weekend. Um, he was actually the first subscriber to my Twitch channel. And so a lot of my stream today was kind of processing all the stuff around that. And what was fun about that is a lot of people were bringing their own experiences and their own stories about the songs and things that they're relating to. I agree with that so much because for me, I am a believer that yes, I have my interpretation of what the song is. And, and like you, I'm exactly the same. I don't like to write about, oh, I was writing, I don't do the Taylor Swift style. If I'm writing about this person and this thing yeah. that happened, it's always like a jumble of feelings and exploring things. And I find that I learn things from people when they share them <laughs> yes. with me. I'll be like, wow, I didn't realize that was in there, but they hit something and it hit something in me. And I'm like, oh yeah, that was definitely in there. Like I was definitely thinking about that thing when yeah. when when that was writing this song. And so, and even like yeah. 
themes, right? Like, yeah. like across different songs. Like I've had people come like, oh, well, you write about this or like you say this word or like you use this line a lot. Like why? And it's like, oh shit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I do. Guess I, that oh, yeah, is I like do. a thing <laughs> that I do a lot. Of, like, yes. Yes. I think um, every no, musician cool. has tr- has their tropes, though, and I like that. Yeah. Like to me, that's what makes you identifiable to the audience because you can genre bend, you can go different places, you can do different things, but your tropes are always unique to you, and they're kind of what go, oh, this is an Alana Maddie song, or this is a Silence Noise song, or this is a Sarah Jazz song, because of your whatever the things are that resonate with you. So I, think I guess for really me important. as an instrumentalist, that makes more sense, like licks, yeah. licks or something. Oh, for sure. Like because I don't, I don't, I don't do text or lyrics a lot yes and if i do it's like very minimal because i'm very bad at that and i have both i think and and let's ask elena that do you do you feel like you have lyric tropes or musical tropes or both i know for me it's both definitely both Yeah. yeah definitely both i a friend of mine um that i met through twitch the other day was saying like oh i was trying to learn a bunch of your songs and i've learned that alana maddie loves a walking bass line and i was like Fair. <laughs> yeah. Yes. All right. Cool. Yes. Yeah. But it's true. But it's true. Like, there's definitely stuff that like comes up over and over again. Right. And I think it it partially has to do with like what you like what as a musician you're like listening to or influenced by at yes. the time. Yes. You know, like you're always trying to be like, oh, you know, oh, I really like how this sounds. Then you kind of try and like adapt it in your own way. And so I find that it it often depends on that. Or if you're like me and you don't listen to enough music at all, yes. I end up just playing your own music then you just write more of what you were writing before yeah Yeah, i think that's i I, i'm in that trap right now too i was talking about that i think that especially if you're producing a lot like you do as well you just get stuck in that and you're like i'm just listening to my own stuff over and over and it's not because that's all i want to listen to it's just because i'm working and i'm producing something and i'm busy and it's like it's and i don't want to lose the melody when it's in my head or i get a feeling and it's like yeah you just talking about that i actually have a question um first for a lot and then for you too actually do you ever feel or, or or catch yourself writing about something that you haven't experienced yourself but that is just basically storytelling. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I find, and it's really, this is just for me, I don't know, silence yeah. also experiences this, but I don't know what I'm writing about often when I start writing something. Mm-hmm. And I'll be like, Same. oh, I want to kind of capture this feeling or I want to capture this thing. And then like halfway through the song, I'll be like, oh, that's what I'm writing about okay and then that'll usually like get me through to the end but when i start writing a song it's super rare that i'll sit down and be like this is what i'm writing about this is the feeling that i have this is what i'm doing like that rarely happens and if it does if i do sit down i'm like this is what i'm writing it's garbage yeah i agree like it it just turns into garbage (laughs) yeah interesting (laughs) yep very 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 true for me i have themes i write about i do realize that they're you know like i have my tropes and one of the tropes mm-hmm. I like to, I like, I like it both musically and lyrically is I like to write about breakdowns. And I, a lot of times I like to write about breakdowns that escalate to the point of places that I would hope I never experienced in my life. So I write about murder a lot. I write about violence a lot. I write about like things that are like taking things beyond a point that a normal or civilized person would go. You know, like in my latest DP, that's really, I didn't realize this while I was writing it, and I'm sure Alana's had the same experience sometimes, where I didn't realize when I was writing it that I was writing a song, basically, I was writing an album about about a breakup that led to a murder, (laughs) which is basically, I realized as all the songs were going together, I'm like, oh yeah, like that's where this is going. This is a horrible, destructive, painful, awful relationship, and then it has an inevitable, it has an inevitable conclusion where someone dies. I it, feel like yeah. that's. I feel like that's that that that's what keeps keeps us from being actual serial. Oh, for sure, for me, <laughs> like, I have to do that. I, well, and I tell people that all the time. Like, I, I Prince Adam, who hangs out in our chat a lot, and he comes to my chat a lot, will make jokes and comments like, "Why don't you ever write a happy song? Like, why don't you ever write happy songs?" And I'm like, I "Because I hate that so I can't. much. Right? I can't. hate it. I can't so do it. Annoying." And, and for me, it's it's so difficult because for me, music is this vehicle that's really about expressing these parts of me that I can't express in other ways. Because when you see me on a stream or on this, I'm SpongeBob. You know, I'm bouncing all over the place and I'm happy. And it's like, but the only way that I can be SpongeBob is by writing about murder all the time. Because it's like, if I don't express these horrible feelings and these horrible experiences yeah. that I've been through in some way, 
that it doesn't work. Um, going and, and, yeah. in, going yeah. into that, I actually have that question. Do you, what is mu what does music um, mean for you? Is it a way to Ooh. express feelings, emotions? We're so deep today. Just, this was so dumb of an episode to just, start. And now we're asking all we these were really deep about questions. I love sausages it. Sausages for so long. Um, <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good question. Yeah. Um, for me, actually, like, it's almost exactly what Silent said. Like, uh, I, like, me as a person, I'm very optimistic. I'm a super go getter. I'm very, like, goal oriented, like, focused. Like, I'm not, I'm not much of, like, I don't know how to describe it. I'm not really that sad, I guess. Yes. But I'm only not sad because I'm writing that and putting that into my music and, like, getting that emotions out. And like I have realized in the last couple of years, I started going to therapy, highly recommend. Yes. It's great. Yep. Um, but she's like, oh, you don't know how to feel things. And I'm like, oh, fair. <laughs> like, I, I didn't, you know, like, mm. you don't really think about it, right? And like, it, but it's true. And like, I, I'm very bad at, at expressing emotions in any way other than writing music. And so yeah. I use music unintentionally. Like, it's not like I sit down and I'm like, I'm sad. I need to deal with this in music. I'm just like, I yeah. feel like I need to write a song right now. And then I sit down and I'm crying and writing this song. And like music is one of the only things that can make me cry. Really, yeah. that's really sad, but it's true. No, it's not. I don't um, think it's sad at all. It's great it makes, because nothing it makes, makes me cry. <laughs> <laughs> dead inside team hey. uh, team dead inside um, what's up yeah it's, it's weird what's up <laughs> <laughs> no that's I love uh, that and yeah. I totally understand that yeah yeah so I don't know that's that like that for me it's just I don't know. There's not not really anything else to say. It's just it's just how I process things, and it's it's helpful and it's useful. And I think that also like to like bring it back around yeah. when people then also are like, "Hey, I relate to your music." I'm like, "Oh, this is useful to you. Yes. That's yeah. great." Like I've not only written something that was cathartic for me and useful for me, but it's also now becoming something that's useful for you. That's helping you to deal with something that you're going through, and like yeah. that. That's really great. Yep. No, I, it's weird because it's funny, and I want you to answer this question too. But for me, it's I'm I'm I always feel like I'm exactly the opposite of all the Twitch streamers we talk about because I am overly emotional. Like emotions are constantly bleeding out of me all the time, and music I'm is jealous, the thing honestly. that it's the same. same how music is the thing senpai. that keeps yes. me from literally like going crazy. Because to me, it's like sometimes there are things that are just so difficult to process. And I was talking about that today. Like, I, I, you know, I lost a really good friend. And over the past five years, I've lost the majority of my family. Like, I've, oh, I've had so, so many sorry. deaths. And, and so to me, it was just like, there are some things that you just can't process emotionally. It's just like, okay, when, when that happens, you have no other vehicle. And, and that with life experience and all those things, you know, for me... It's, it's the opposite balance, and, and I'm definitely a person. What music means for me takes me back to being two or three years old. And I really, I say this a lot, and it's kind of a weird thing to say, but music is the thing that taught me about life. I wasn't a person that had a good family. I wasn't a person that had a lot of people that, that taught me how to live or taught me life lessons or taught me about emotions or that kind of thing. So I associate a lot of the music of my life with life lessons and things I learned. Like Depeche Mode, why I love Depeche Mode so, so much is Depeche Mode taught me what love is. Like, and yes, yeah, some of it's kind of weird and creepy and cringy sometimes, but overall, like there are themes to that music that, that are like, all right, this is what love is supposed to feel like. This is what passion is supposed to feel like. This is what rage is supposed to feel like. And so all those things kind of went into buckets. And so it's why I think I like such a diverse type, diverse types of music because mm -hmm. it's like expressions of these different things that are very important. Yes, Master and Servant taught me about love. Yes, for sure. <laughs> and, it's, and you're not wrong. It did, but in some ways. But I'm just saying, like that is, it's the opposite for me. And can't agree enough on the therapy thing. But it's it's interesting because I feel like a lot of what I'm learning about Twitch and from doing the show and talking to a lot of other Twitch streamers is Twitch, especially people who have been around for a while on Twitch, seems to be the home of like introvert musicians. 
Like, it seems to be the home of, like, people who are very comfortable, like, being in their home studio and they weren't mm-hmm. missing the tourists and all that stuff. Whereas I, when I would go and meet musicians at shows and stuff, I feel like that's where I would meet a lot of the extrovert musicians who were very alive when they're around people and performing. But it's very... But that's it, still it's, us, both. I agree. That's us, too. That's still us. Yeah. The people, when yeah. you meet us on stage or uh, on off stage, basically, after a gig or yeah. between a gig or something... That's who you meet. You meet the extroverts in, in, yeah. in, inside of us. But that's not that's not the, you know, we're more comfortable oh, I get that. doing all of this here. And I'm the weirdo yeah. that is just like, for me, I'm like dying with the COVID thing of like, I, I feel mean, like I can't. I mean, we're all dying with yes, the COVID thing. Let's we all are, but <laughs> it's just like, you know? I, it's killing me yeah. to not be able to, I mean, I'm so glad we have this show. Yeah. Even to just be able to talk to yeah. people because yeah. it's like, I yeah. actually, that's, I'm dying. That, that is my yeah. question. How has... You didn't um, answer the question about music, though, but ask your you question. You didn't even ask a question. No, you asked the question that I wanted you to answer. Oh, what, what question I wanted you to answer, what does music mean to you? Oh, what does music mean I to you? I think that's such a good question. What does music oh, mean to you, musician? Absolutely nothing. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Team dead inside. What's that? Yeah. Um... No, I would. I don't know. I don't. I. That's a. That. I think that's a. That's a deep question. Who asked that stupid? You question? asked that question. Oh, I know. That's why I'm mocking it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a stupid question. Um, I actually have another question. <laughs> We're just gonna that. slide right by. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, yes. well, music is actually where I also, like, uh, Alana, um, I also express my feelings that way. Like, that's how I that's how I express legit my feelings, and that's where I'm the rawest, if that makes yeah. sense. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I can't, I, I don't know, uh, I'm with Alana on this, on this one, I don't know how to express feelings. I don't know how to voice them. I don't know how to no. physically voice them. Maybe I do. I mean, we all do kind of you know, physically, you know, mm-hmm. unconsciously voice them. Mm-hmm. But I don't know how to, 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 I mean, express them. But I don't know how to consciously express them. I don't, I'm, I have a hard time crying. Sometimes I'm like, do you also feel like that, by the way, Just, now that we're talking about this? Do you sometimes feel like, I should be crying right now? This is a moment where I should yeah. be crying and I'm not. And I think this yes. is bad that I'm not. <laughs> Yes, I mean, not to get real dark, but my grandfather passed away a few weeks mm-hmm. ago. I'm sorry. And we, from COVID, unfortunately, yeah. um, and he, we were all, I was with my, my parents and my brother, um, and my partner was there as well. Um, and we knew that he was going to pass that day, but we didn't know when. And so we were all sitting together in a living room, literally just waiting for news from the hospital. Mm-hmm. And like, we got the news and like everyone is crying except for like my brother and I because we're related and so thus yeah. have the same emotional issues. Um, yeah. But like you're sitting there and you're like, this is sad. This is very sad. I should be crying. This is sad. And like, but you can't, like, but you can't, like that doesn't, yeah. it doesn't work, you know? And like, I have had the emotional moments and I was sad and I was grieving in my own way. But you know, those like, those moments where you're like, your brain does exactly that. It's like, I should feel this way. I yeah. should have this reaction. And then you just don't have that reaction. You're like, I don't know what to necessarily do, but like, luckily, like my mom is very much the similar way. And so like, it was her father that passed away and she was also kind of just sitting there being like, yeah, okay. Like, what do I do now? Like yeah. it's, you know, it's a, it's a weird time. And I think I'm very jealous of people who are in tune with their, Oh emotions. yeah. Hon- I'm, so I'm so jealous. I'm so like, like, like <sighs> man. one but of my I best friends is so my, good. Would it's make ridiculous. Our life so much more easy. Like, yeah. would, uh, and you yeah. know, because we get misunderstood. I do so have easily. to say something to that because, again, it's something that I'm going through this week. Um, grief is a bitch in that way, though, in, in some way, I think it's different than other types of like, I should be sad, I should be feeling stuff. Because grief is something, for those of you that haven't experienced it yet, I made this comment on my stream and I talk about it a lot that I think I used to be very arrogant when I was younger. I used to have a very specific belief about death and like what would happen when people in my life died and how I would feel about it and how I'd approach it and how I wanted people to do that when I died. And all that has been blown to shit after actually experiencing 
the different types of grief that go with the different types of people and the different Mm -hmm. ways you experience it and how it experiences. But I think a lot of people, it's okay to be that way in the moment. And the issue with grief is that it it's it wells up in ways that come out later and that come out yeah, in yeah. other forms. And grief yes. is persistent. That's the issue. A lot of people don't realize that, but grief is something that you can you can legit be sitting in a restaurant or something when you could do that before COVID and hear a song <laughs> and be reduced to to wanting to die. (laughs) Like you can hear this thing that reminds you of something. And it was why I was dreading today's stream so much for me, because it was like music and music is how Jeff and I connected. And it was how we got close and why we were close. Mm -hmm. And we would just talk for about music for hours. And it was, I was actually doing semi okay throughout the week. Like I was sad and it was obvious I was sad, but I knew I was building up to having to do that performance. And I'm like, when I'm doing that performance, it's just gonna be so fucking hard to get through it. And it was, it was incredibly hard to get through it. Like I, and I did some special things that was nice, but grief I think is different than other emotions in that sense yeah, of that's true. you can't expect anything from it. You might react immediately, you might not. You might react six months later without yeah. realizing what it's about. You might react two years later, like grief doesn't go away. Yeah. It just kind of is always there welling up and, and you experience it as you experience it. And I don't think anybody, I, I know it's kind of their unsolicited therapy for the audience, but I don't think anybody should judge themselves for how they feel grief, especially when they no. lose someone. Yeah. It's just so I I agree. I agree. Um, also, just to lighten the mood a little bit, leave it to me to take us from talking about sucking on sausage to death. <laughs> I like it. Yes, no, I love it because <laughs> like that's, it. How this, that's how this that's sh- how how the show is. The show actually. is always like that. <laughs> we, we we will we will literally start with ta- or or start with talking about deep things and then end up with sucking sausage. And uh, on that note, <laughs> it's, how we deal with, it's how we deal with our emotions. Okay. <laughs> on that note, terrible I, humor. I have a question that yes. I really like to ask, um, which yes. will brighten the mood a little bit. So, did you ever Hell have yeah. any drama? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. With other Twitch streamers, uh, either on you know Twitter or you know Twitch itself, tell tell us all about it. Okay, no, but I've been paranoid about it. <laughs> <laughs> There's like, okay, this was like a while ago, and I'm not gonna name names, which might start shit, but I'm not meaning to start shit. I'm just saying that there was someone who's maybe a little gossipy. Mm-hmm. Um, was like vague, like you know, like vague booking, but on oh, Twitter, like sub tweeting. Oh, I hate it all so the much. Time. And oh. I didn't know anything at the time. This was a while ago. This was like maybe a year ago. And I was like, I don't know anything about anything that's going on here. And like out of nowhere, I was just like so paranoid about drama. And so like I like messaged this person. I'm like, who like? what's going on? Like, who are you talking about? Cause like, I couldn't, I couldn't figure it out for the life of me. And then this, this person was very much like, well, I can't name names, but like, just know that you just shouldn't trust everyone on the platform. And oh, I was God. like, oh, what? Oh, <laughs> like, I was so mad that I was so like distraught for like that point for like, I'm not anymore. I don't really care. But like, yes. it was just like that, like in that moment, I was like, this doesn't help me at all. I don't feel any better about anything that's happening. Yes. <laughs> but like, I haven't, as far as I know, I don't know. I don't think I've been involved in any drama. <laughs> there is there is drama though. There are some people, especially on Twitter, music streamers yes. on Twitter, bigger ones too. Yes. Um, yes. I, she's yes. Looking, I love how she looks at me because I know who she's talking who about. Like I think to? I also yeah. know who you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. I like, know things now. Yes. 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 <laughs> who like to just just jab but not say names. I have had the same same thing by the way. I've had actual drama with people and they blocked me and so I don't remember their names oh, anymore God. unfortunately. Yes. But because they yeah. blocked me, you know. Which is unfortunate because now that when I see a post especially on Twitter streamer streamer Twitter, like sometimes it's like you can't see this tweet because you know yeah, you've I think been you, blocked. I think you tweeted yeah, something I tweeted about, about that the other day and I was yeah. like and shit. <laughs> few people who blocked me because I see this all the time. Yes, yes. <laughs> there is actually people in the music community who will take jabs and I have had the same experience as you where, was, where I DM'd them. I was like, hey, 
like, I'm sorry if this offended you that I said or something. They're like, no, this yeah, is not yeah, about yeah. you. This is about somebody else. And I'm like, uh-huh, right, 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 right. right. Well, and so Tell I me. guess I want to <laughs> I want to go into this question because uh, one thing I love about you and what you're doing is I think you have a similar mentality to what we do in the sense that you do your cozy corner and you're you're doing an amazing job in doing what I think is the most important thing in music is to feature other artists. I bring that up all the time that I love shout outs, I love raids, I love the fact that all of us do that, but everybody knows if you're in the music business that the way that bands break is to be on stage with other artists. And that's why yes. we started this show. Yes. It's like you go, you learn about bands by going to see bigger bands on tour and learning about their opening yeah. acts. And that's how it works. And you kind of do that too. But my curiosity about that then is because we like to ask this question on the show a lot and it's related to the drama question is what has been your experience of the quote unquote music community since you've started doing things like this, like the Cozy Corner and all that. And I always ask this in general, do you actually feel like there is a thing that is the Twitch music community that exists on Twitch? You know, like there is a Twitch music community or what are your feelings on that? So I have a, a preface before I, I answer this question. Okay. Um, I feel like a politician. Uh, I'm not. Um, I did not have romantic relations with that streamer. No, no, definitely not. Um, I so I live in Toronto, which is like one of the biggest cities in Canada. For those of you who are unaware, yes. Um, and the music scene here is insanely competitive. Mm -hmm. Like it, competitive, and it's petty. Like it's in ways that I, I like I can't I can't explain. And like it's it's it's. I don't know. There's no sense of community here. Like, yes. if you are friends with someone personally because you knew them before, like, they were doing music, then you're in the community. Yes. But it's because you knew them beforehand. It's not because, yes. like, they heard your music or because you're also performing at the same venues that they are. Uh -huh. Like, you Lunatize. don't... It just doesn't exist the same way that it does here. And so, like, coming to Twitch... And suddenly having raids and hosts and like, like being in other people's streams and having other streamers being in your streams and and supporting and having shows like this one and having shows like I mean the one that I'm doing now and like I know the compliments just started uh, uh like the compliments presents show and like that just doesn't exist here and so like my real world yeah. music community experience has been kind of shit. It's like me, like venue owners being gross and promoters blaming you for not bringing enough people right. when their entire yes. payroll is to promote the show. Like, right. I'm so bitter on the music scene here. And so coming to Twitch, there is a community and there is a sense of like lifting each other up in a more genuine way than I have experienced in my life up until this Same. point. And Same. having the ability to collaborate with people and like even what i mentioned earlier like having people play your songs is bananas like that's <laughs> right? crazy like yeah. that's so cool and that's something you don't see outside of twitch like at all unless there's some sort of clout to be gained from covering someone else's song at a show you just don't you don't see it whereas like i there do are still songs think that, some people like, do that on twitch though i do have to present oh, yes, there are some yes, i will that agree the there game. are some clout chasers yes, for yes. sure <laughs> for sure um and like i don't know it's just i like my collab i started on election night because we wanted to stream something that was going to be stress-free it was just going to be like something for people to watch that wasn't the u.s election what else can we do that's not this and like uh, sorry, my brain just went in five different directions at the same time. Talking about um, the election but, thing. Yeah, so we, so we like, that's how the collab started. And I just had so much fun, like, singing with and playing with. It was like, you, I think, I think what Silas said earlier, like, you just like doing the show because you get to like talk to people and like hang yeah, out with people. Yeah, it's the same. Yeah, it's the same. Yeah. It's the same thing. I feel that every time. I'm like, oh, I get to like kind of sing with people and like chat and meet people. And like that energy, like, feeds me yes yeah. same, same well and for me I, I i have always told the truth that in some ways i started the show because i was angry and i know this is a very weird thing to say but i started the show because i was angry because okay. in my opinion there are not a lot of people that are just 
either solely or predominantly focused on playing originals on Twitch. It's like 95% of music streamers are doing yeah. some form of busking or covers or requests. And I don't blame yeah. them for doing that. I get it. It brings mm-hmm. in the money. It brings in the revenue. It brings in the viewers. Like there's there's a there's a good thought process. And if I wasn't a stubborn asshole, then I would probably do that <laughs> myself. But I was just frustrated because I was looking at all of these original musicians that are that were my friends and going like, we're all growing so slow. No one pays attention to us. No one cares about original music. Mm-hmm. Half of our chat room when people show up in them is people bitching about what we don't play and what we won't do to the point where I even have a meme in my channel, which is me ripping on people who make, you know, who come in and are like, play this thing, which all of us do that to some degree, but same Thomas. Yeah. And it's, it's, no, and I, it's not that it's just like, I wa- I was mad because I'm like, man, people like other glow and four after ever and lunar tides. I was going to mention since you guys are in here and you guys are coming back to Twitch, uh, send me a DM. I want to get you on the show. Let's get you on music exposed anyway. But, um, <laughs> Seriously. Since you're here, let's just take care of business. Like you guys should, you guys need to be on the show. <laughs> so anyway, but I was just so fucking mad because I'm like these guys. Like I watch a Jay Dublay who has a, the best studio on Twitch, and, and he has five viewers. And it's like I watch these guys that pour their heart and soul into these things, and it was just like, how do I actually make a difference for these people? Whereas Sarah wanted to clout chase, and she's like, I love. <laughs> she's that like, I love. So- I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding, I'm kidding. Some people actually might believe that. that That's not true. No, she, no, it's just Sarah, Sarah had more relationships with the bigger streamers than I do. Because Um, I've been on the, on the platform for way longer. I've been here for, for almost three years and I've been, I've been about a year longer, just about a year longer, but I admit that's also part of why I didn't discover Alana. I, I know that for me, I spend the bulk of my time in tiny streamer channels. And it's like, so for me, I'm like hunting down the people that add five to 10 and it'd be like, oh, there's 50 people in here. They don't need me, which is bad. I realize in, in hindsight- I wanted to talk to you about that today, actually, because yeah. you mentioned something about that last week. Yes. About the like mid tier, like you said something along the lines of like, I want you to still care about this show. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, it's true. Um, but like, I I feel like there's something to be to be said there that like, you reach a certain point where you're doing well, you know, like really undeniably well. Yeah. And it kind of pauses. Yes, I was actually I wanted to ask you about that based on this. So, so have <laughs> yeah, you? Yeah, sounds like me. That? Ah! <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> well, and and. and and that's something that I think is is common in actually all kind of real world, you know, if you look at it from just a business perspective or from that perspective mm-hmm. of you don't grow in a straight line, you grow in plateaus. Like you'll straight line, plateau, straight line, plateau. Yeah. And then eventually you're, what you do on that plateau is going to determine whether you grow more or whether you shrink from that point. And you kind of are constantly <laughs> yeah. making decisions, hoping that you'll grow. But have you experienced that? Have you experienced like you hit a certain level of success and then you're like, where's the silence noise? He doesn't show up in my chat anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, definitely a little bit. I feel like there's a, there's, I don't know. I, my growth has been quite steady. It's been, yeah. it's been very much the same for the last like I don't know, it's almost not quite a year, but like maybe like six, seven months. It's been like no. quite the same and amazing. Like I can't, I can't deny it's been incredible. My community is amazing. No. Um, but there are definitely like moments. And I think this is something that like streamers don't talk about a lot where you reach a point where you're like kind of plateauing maybe. And all of a sudden you're sitting there going like, what did I do? Did I do something yes. wrong? My growth yes. was so good. What do I do now? But you re- but you forget that you've grown already. You've yeah. already right. done it. You've already gone past that point. But you're just constantly thinking back to like, okay, what do I do now? Like, what? And it's like, it's an end- there's no answer. There's no answer no. to that question. And it's a dumb thing to have to think about. But you do think about you it. You do because it's, it's so inevitable. Horrible. And I talk about this on my stream all yeah. the time. Because this is a thing that we all and and the first person that I that I witnessed going through this is this e guy, which is a very big um, German uh, streamer. He has anything between five hundred to three thousand people watching, and he talked about that. Um, he was like, "Well, 
there was a time where I hit 2,000 subs and I was so happy, you know, because I finally made 2,000 subs. And now I'm at 2,500 and worrying about my future and be yeah, like, yes. oh my God, yes. what the hell am I yeah. doing wrong, you know? And he explained that whole process and, 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 and I was going through the same thing at the same time and I was like, well, see, even the big, like everybody has that problem because we are in constant, this is the problem about online, uh, content creation, which you don't experience in the mu in the real life music world. Yeah. At least I didn't experience that. Which yeah. is, you are in constant comparison with yourself, and you need to be better and better and better because that's yes. how the online world works. You need yeah. to be better yes. and more numbers yeah. and it's all more the numbers, success. Yeah. And you're in constant. Yeah. Just fight with yourself, actually. Well, and plus the totally. income isn't stable on top of it, which is at least in the traditional world. For the most part, this is not always true, and your mileage may vary depending on where you are. But you know, you do a gig, you get paid. You know, yeah. for the most yeah. part, you and unless you have some you're, sort of unless idea. You're Darth Rips unless you're Darth Rips, Rips and you have to carry a, a gun. gun. A gun, you know. Yeah, but at least <laughs> that, where it's like, there are times, and I'm sure all three of us have experienced it, where it's like, you will play for three, four hours, and you'll be like, I killed it, and then you'll hit the end, and you'll be like, I made no money today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or like, I did nothing, I got no subs, no nothing. And so you find yourself going, ah, shit, like, what, what, a, yeah, exactly what you said, of yeah, the amount of like mental health pitfalls in streaming, we've been saying for weeks, and we just haven't had time, maybe Alana, if you'd be interested in actually <laughs> doing this with us, we've been saying for weeks that we want to do a stream that's specific about what we call real world streamer issues, yeah, or like the for, burnout yeah. stream. Yeah. The burnout we, yes. stream. So if you'd yeah. be willing to do that with us, we totally. would love to do it because we like to talk about stuff that people are scared to talk about. And like, yeah. And, yeah. and I think that's one of the things is there's so many pitfalls that you don't realize that you'll hit. And like you said, exactly like that, like you'll grow a ton and then you'll plateau and you'll be like, I suck now. Like I should, le um, I should legit like not. <laughs> yeah. There's, I've had this conversation with a, with a number of different, different streamers and it's so, it just makes you feel so much better. You know, like you, once you have those people that you can talk to about this stuff, you know, and I'm always honored when people want to like reach out to me and talk to me and we end up, you know, like venting about things, but especially for like newer streamers or when streamers experience like really fast growth, I'm always like, it's really good now, but at some point something's gonna happen and you're gonna have a bad time. And I'm yeah. so sorry that that's gonna happen to you. And yes. I'm so worried for you for yes. when that moment comes, you know? And like, because it is gonna happen. There's so many highs in streaming, so many. Whether mm -hmm. you're performing live music or doing whatever, there's so many highs and so many good moments, but there are those moments of low that are very hard to explain to people that haven't experienced it. Yeah. And so like- yes. I've had that conversation with a number of other streamers on the on the platform where we just kind of like have these amazing heart to hearts. And like even if we're not people that necessarily like talk to each other all the time, all of a sudden you start talking and you can't stop and it's like, yeah. oh my gosh, we've both experienced the same thing and we're both going through the same thing and it just makes you feel so much more normal and feel so much more like, oh, okay, what I'm going through is is fine and you know or like if they come to me with a problem and i'm like yeah i've been there it's fine like i get it it sucks yeah um, but it's gonna get better you know like it's Cause it's always tied it's, to it's rough it's always tied to the to the thing of oh just because i'm am i a cloud chaser or am i somebody who only cares Ugh, about numbers yeah. like what type of person am i am i becoming yeah. but it has nothing to do with that it's totally fine like like you said alana it's, yeah. it's it's okay it's okay to worry about it because yeah. it's normal because we kind of get drilled to do it because it's yeah. a thing online content creation that's that's what it is all about and it's we what don't our make... value gets yeah. pulled into right yeah. which right. is yeah. it, it's, it's inevitable even if we are like oh i don't care about the numbers it's inevitable because that's what all, the to. whole world bases your success on uh, well in, 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 <laughs> which in, in, is in the sense, worst yeah. thing ever it's right? the worst it is. like I just really quickly want to say yeah, that ahead. you were talking about streamers that are like have like amazing setups and amazing music and stuff and there are so many of them that it just hurts my heart so much that they don't have the success yes. that they deserve. That and that's all that's all, I just wanted to say that really quickly. Totally. That it just it just hurts me sometimes. You, that I'm like, you oh my god, it. you're so good. That's why you and do like, what you do though. And that's and it's why I said it was the it was the main 
impetus behind starting the show. And when we started the show, the original idea was kind of doing the Music Exposed festivals, which didn't come until way later. We started the talk show first because that was easy to figure out. And I'm sure yeah. you've had the same issue of like, all right, now yeah. how do I get all these musicians in one place? And <laughs> what technology am I going to use? And I want to be able to talk to them. And, and yeah. I, you know, I did a bunch of research, as I'm sure you did. And I was like, how do I create this stage? And what was amazing is, and I'm, I, I'm, I actually wanted to ask you about this. Um, what was amazing is, is once I created it, and I haven't been able to do do one recently. I need to actually set one up soon. I want to do one before I leave Germany um, Music Exposed Festival. But yeah, if you're interested in being part of that too, Elena. Um, I, oh, absolutely. Festival, if, uh, if, if, if you would festival. want to. Um, <laughs> but but beyond that, have you found that now that you've kind of got the platform that people are kind of starting to naturally turn towards you a little bit and be like, hey, you know, they, they're, they're seeing you more in a kind of you know, quote unquote leadership role or in a supportive role for the community or that kind of thing. Have you experienced any of that? Yeah, definitely. Um, and I think it also comes with this, like the cozy vibes that are just my life. Vibes. <laughs> the people are like, you know, you're like, I'm a calm presence usually. Occasionally, very chaotic neutral. Yeah. Usually a pretty calm presence around and pretty like even headed. And so I find that now that I don't know, people are seeing, like, doing the interview stuff and getting to talk to other people, I feel like, I don't know, people want to be on the show now, and that's rad. Like, that's so cool. Yeah. And, like, I don't know, it's just, it's it's nice, and it's nice to feel, I don't know how to, how to like, wanted, I guess, in this community, or important in this community. Yeah, I know what it's you mean. It's nice, yeah. you know? You know what I mean? Like, it's those are bigger words than I mean, but I can't think of a better word for it. No, yeah, and I like that. It's nice to feel appreciated. Maybe that's the word yeah. I'm looking for. Appreciate yeah. and recognized. Yes, yes, Recognize, both. Appreciate for sure. Well, and that's and, and see, it's why I ask those questions because I've always been kind of banging the drum for the fact that I don't really think there's a Twitch community, <laughs> and I'm always the person that is. Kind I was of gonna ask you that. actually. I was gonna yeah. say like, let's flip it. I'm curious to know because everyone's experience is so different. Yes. I'm curious to know what your thoughts are on like the sense of community. I, I agree with what you said in the sense of de comparing it to an indie music scene, which is obviously where mm -hmm. I had the most experience. It's night and day. I agree with that, but I also think that as Twitch has progressed, and I haven't even been here that long. I've been streaming for two years and Sarah's been streaming for three and all that stuff. What I have realized is a lot of that stuff does start to creep in to the Twitch music community. And I think that Twitch, I, I kind of agree with what you said. Well, Creative says there's a community and a bunch of more micro communities in it. I don't believe there's an overall community. Yeah, I don't think I believe so. that there's, there's a, a bunch of micro communities. There's and, a so-called music community. And I think that eventually what's going to happen, <laughs> and, and this is why we did the show and why I think it's so smart that you're doing what you're doing, eventually what always ends up happening, because it has to, is people end up gravitating to tastemakers. They start saying, mm -hmm. all right, you know, Alana knows who the people are. Like, I'm just gonna tune into her and she's gonna <laughs> tell me who to follow. Or Music Exposed is gonna tell me who I need to know about. Like, that was the, the bet that we were kind of putting out there when we did that. Because I mm -hmm. feel like there isn't. I feel like what has happened is, is there's like a big, you know, kind of nebulous, larger group of streamers. Some are more plugged in, some feel really withdrawn at this yeah. point. Like, you know, some, some of the larger streamers have nothing to do with the smaller streamers. Some, yeah. you know, they kind of all came up together and so they're their own little community of people. And so for me, that's why I always sat back and maybe it's just me being a crotchety old man and I was always just like, <laughs> where the fuck is this magic music community that's so blah, 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 blah. I am blah, blah. even worse than you though. My, you do too, I yeah, am very, yeah. I am even worse. My, my, my perception of the music community is that there is a music category now. Yes. It's beautiful, it's called music. <laughs> Um, there's a bunch of streamers on their dare, and then there are clicks, and that's the thing. Yes. It is clicks. It's very high school-y, yeah. but I do agree with you, Alana. The real-life music world is cutthroat. Oh, yes. Which, yeah. which isn't, in re isn't on Twitch yet, because there's a lot of professional musicians coming mm -hmm. on Twitch more and more. Uh, yeah, and there's the COVID double and labels, side sort of Which that, that yeah. will, will come with it, because, you know, the, the yeah. professional musicians or gigging musicians 
are used to cutthroat and are used to, um, it's, you know, to try to, you know, it's very elbowy, like I like to say, right. um, but, but it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's gonna come more. But before that, it was very clicky. Very clicky. Like I, I experienced that, especially as a as a variety and cussing and very, very, um, very loud streamer who doesn't give a fuck and probably yeah, comes the from opposite a, of cozy vibes. Yes, the opposite <laughs> of cozy vibes. That's us. <laughs> That's me having ADHD, so yes. don't worry about it. But, uh, <laughs> but I, I experienced something different because I was always very loud about being a professional mm -hmm. musician. So that you probably were. also comes across as arrogant to some people, especially, you know, also saying that some musicians on Twitter are <laughs> mediocre and stuff. Maybe that didn't help, you know? Maybe those things didn't help. But it's <laughs> Those things probably didn't help, but yes, there is there is kind of a there are clicks. It's very true, um, and and it's not. Yeah. But it's like high school stuff. It's not as cutthroat as you said. Like yeah, the not. real life, that that is that is completely different. Like that yeah. that is that is the differences, um, you know, between real life things. Whereas like one band will outsell the other band by being like, oh, I'll do it for fifty bucks less or right. something and get the gig instead, which is. It can yeah. turn existential, which on Twitch, yeah. it's just drama. Nobody cares, you know? Yeah, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't matter. But, yeah, I, do, I, mean, I don't feel like there's, like, a community I, as one. I think that, like, hearing you say that, I do agree with you. And, like, I think that maybe I'm unintentionally part of a, of a clique and I didn't realize it. <laughs> but when I do think about the community... I can name them and I yeah. know that there are more people than I can name in the music category yes. and in mm -hmm. what should be the music community, which I guess does mean that it's a clique. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but something, something I, I would like to, to note though, is that like, I have like zero self-esteem. It's real bad. <laughs> I like beat red. Um, yes. <laughs> but you like, like, I wait for people to come to me. And I'm like, oh, people make friends by waiting for people to come to them. That's not, it's a, that's not how it works. And like, right. I often, like, I like, even through like my high school experience and college, you know, I would exclude myself just by accident. It's something I learned on Twitch, and, but I also kind of on purpose because, like, I, you know, it doesn't matter. Anyway. Um, they like on Twitch I found that I would like keep myself separate and then I'd message someone and be like oh you are also just as insecure as I am <laughs> and you were also waiting for me to message you yes you know like it, you weren't going to you weren't thinking like oh I don't want to collab with this person blah, blah 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 you were just doing exactly the same thing that I was doing which is waiting for someone to reach out Yep. to you kind yeah. of thing and like i will say that i've never been let down by my one-on-one -on -one interactions with anyone in this like in the yeah. music category yeah i've always had really positive interactions when i do end up talking to people on one-on-one -on -one, but maybe that's also just the people that i feel comfortable messaging there's definitely people that i don't feel comfortable messaging and yeah. wouldn't who do you not feel comfortable you know? messaging Spill the tea. You. Yes, it's obviously us. you. That's oh. how I got on this show, right? You begged me. <laughs> yeah, that's that's it. Yeah, that's right. We weren't yeah. just chatting about nothing, and then this came up. Um, <laughs> no, but it's like you know, it's it's my it was my own insecurities were kind of getting in my way, and they still do. Yeah. Literally today, I had someone that I had messaged, and they hadn't responded to me as quickly as I'd expected them to, and I was like, well, that's the end of that. Fuck. Okay, great, cool. Mm -hmm. I guess I did something and yeah, I didn't know no, what I did. And then they me. messaged me and we you talked know? for like two hours yeah. and it was fine. Yeah, it's like, yes. oh no, they hate but me. Like, oh, I'm the same. They totally yeah. hate me. I'm the they same. hate me. They didn't yeah. answer in a day. They hate me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but there's definitely been like opportunities that I've been like left out of and then been like, oh, I guess I'm not like part of this and I thought I was and then I would like talk to someone they'd be like oh shit no I just like forgot to put you in the thing here mm -hmm. let's do this and like fix it you know and like that's something in like at least in Toronto or in the indie music scene you wouldn't have you couldn't reach right. out to someone and be no. like oh I wasn't included in this show and they'd be like oh darn yeah bless, your, bless your heart <laughs> oh man I totally forgot <laughs> 
But I think that's why you're smart in the sense that you obviously are kind of putting yourself, because I really do believe, and this is the, the bet that I've kind of made, is I, I do think you were smart, you know, before, even if you weren't thinking about it in that way, to kind of position yourself as being a person that hosts those types of events and brings people together and kind of, I use yeah. the analogy of create, of building the stage or building the stage in some ways. And that's eventually, I think that is the audience's, it's, we're still in the real world, even though it's on the internet. And although everyone likes to act like Twitch is some weird alternative universe where, and, and there are some amazing things to Twitch in the sense of the way people can interact with streamers and musicians and music is so amazing and interesting compared to the real world. But in the end, people are people, and eventually people are gonna gravitate, I believe, towards people who do things like that. Yeah. They're gonna go to like, okay, I and, and that's been my experience of growth on the platform too. It's like, oh, over time you start to develop partnerships. Like Sarah was a huge influence in helping get people learn about me. And there were a few small streamers, mm -hmm. you know, my little click that helped me grow. And then, you know, of course, you are for definitely me, in the click. You're I, started a cl music I started click. a click. You're, you're I started a click. Well, I didn't start it. The I didn't start it, but I am definitely in a click. Yes, my click. And I, I brought this up before. And my click has grown. It has started to grow, but yeah, TBR has grown. Well, the the village, no, I mean village the village, the village Ruse is the one who recruited me into it, but it was it was basically the village Ruse, other glow, for after ever, uh, lunar tides, uh, creative minds is now part of that. Northbound Matt is now part of that. J Dublay. Um, yeah, all the original streamers. All that. that and Rosemary Teal is now part yeah. of it now, but it, it's really like I was because again I'm a I'm a I bring this up all the time, but. My tastes are particular, and it's not that I don't respect artists who do covers, it's just not what I like. You know, so for yeah. me, it's like, if I had the choice, and I know I've repeated this a lot on the show, if I had the choice of choosing to go see a cover band on a Friday night, or choosing to go see an indie artist, I would go see the indie artist yeah. 10 times out of 10. Like must I, be that's... nice being part of a community slash click slash group. <laughs> You're part of it, you oh, jackass. Must be God, nice. God, you the worst. Must be nice. Um, I have a, I have a last question, but it's an overtime question. We've been in overtime for We've 20 been, minutes. Yeah. Overtime. overtime. Anyways, my question is. I'm sorry. My question is, I'm not sorry. <laughs> We're not sorry. I can talk to. Do we I, have a time limit? I can just talk for. No, we, we always do the overtime thing. We do that time whenever we, after one. We uh, whenever after, we're past. Uh, whenever we're past. Four p.m. Yeah, 4 p. or one p.m. Four p.m. specific. Or, or whatever, 7 p.m. EST. <laughs> we're on so many times. We're on Germany, so many time Pacific, uh, Eastern, What time whatever. is it there? Uh, it's it's 1 a.m. 1.20 a.m. 1.20 a.m. Jeez. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, but my question is, who are the streamers on Twitch that inspire you the most? That's a good question. It's changed a lot over the years. <laughs> it's been on. one year. It's changed a lot over the year. Oh, what man. are you laughing at me Sorry, for? Nor what did Nor I Nor do? Northbound Matt had the best response. <laughs> Northbound Matt said, Sarah Jazz, we would invite you, but your voicemail is full. <laughs> That was a great callback joke. Bravo, no fun. Oh, oh callback so joke. good. Thank you. That was so good. <laughs> anyway, sorry. What streamers oh inspire gosh. you, Elena? Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, um, Claire Picks is the first one that comes to mind, which is like a really nice. random reference. But she was one of the first people I watched when I got on the platform. Cool. And she was literally the reason I started looping and wanted to do this and i think she's just such a sweet sweet human and like it's probably why i have like the chill vibes that i do uh -huh. yeah. um but also like i like there's so there's so many i think anyone this is very broad but it's kind of like anyone that is unashamed unabashedly themselves uh -huh. <laughs> and i th i think that's what i like the most i guess i don't yes. know i like it when like I love people who play original music and who talk about it and who are into that kind of thing. But I also love people who play covers as though they're their own original music. Yeah, I do you know, appreciate like that. There's, yeah. there's people that I listen to 
like I think of like Numb the Geek is one of the people that I think is just one of the most freaking talented people, and I wish that he had all of the success in the world. Yeah. I, I he can't has been growing, express. Though. Yeah, he has, yeah. and I'm so freaking happy. Like yeah. he finally, like, I'm right? in his, it took him. A I while. know mm-hmm. as many of his streams as I can be in. I'm I'm there. It's just like a like a happy place for me. But there's so many songs that he plays, and I can't hear them any other way. And yeah. when I think of the songs, and even when I go to play them on my own stream, I hear Kevin, and that's that's and that's amazing to me. I want to yeah. I want to listen to people that that do that, and like those are the people that inspire me the most, who are so unafraid to kind of like or seem unafraid. I'm sure no one is, but who yeah. at least appear to be unafraid to be themselves and to yeah. be doing what they're doing right. and doing their own things. And that, like that, to me is very is very inspiring. Yeah, I brought this up on my stream today, but I think it's so important to talk about, especially when we talk about original musicians, that a lot of people don't realize the the level of skill and effort it takes to become a good songwriter. You know, songwriting <laughs> is actually yeah. a very underrated and undervalued skill. Whereas I think there are so many very talented and skilled musicians on Twitch that are very good at that and and do that, but. There are so many people that I wish would invest in becoming songwriters and working on that. Because yeah, in some ways it's the same, if not even more difficult at the beginning than learning an instrument because you have to figure out what your voice is and how you want to communicate and how you want to write. And I think that's why you run into so many people that are incredibly skilled musicians that are not great songwriters because they don't work out those muscles. And I always, yeah. I just love encouraging people to do more of that. Like, I wish you, more people would do that. Do you want to ask us mm-hmm. a last question before we do? It has do, to be the last uh, question. Before we do. Yes, uh, Al- Alana, when can we hang out again? Because I pretty much am in love with you. So anytime, <laughs> anytime we can hang out again. No, well, uh, uh, you embody, like, I actually grew up in Detroit. So I'm also a Midwesterner and Detroit is yeah. the Toronto of the South. So it's been like there many times. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, for me, it's the. Uh, I think that's why I resonate so much with not only that. I, I, I wanted to ask this question. Do you find it's an overtime question? Don't overtime. Overtime. <laughs> overtime. <laughs> Yes. I'm just making noise. That's all you have yeah. to do. That's it's perfect. Just, That's okay, okay. I'm I'm di- I did it. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, so so my, my... Oh, you grew up in Novi? That's interesting. Um, so do you find that there is a regional flavor, you know, that kind of ends up in your music? Like you mentioned Toronto and the Toronto music scene, which I'm obviously very familiar with, having grown up in Detroit and all the stuff that's there. And I feel that there is a lot of Detroit and kind of Midwest in what I write. How do you, do you feel that there's regional flavor that that creeps into your music and and how, how is that kind of incorporated into what you do? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> nice. The 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 Toronto music scene is very garage rocky these days. Yes. Why? I don't know. And that is 0% what I write. Yes. That's um interesting. so like I guess not really and it, but I think that's also part of there was a period in my life when I went to a lot of shows, like a lot of indie shows like 5 10 years ago. All I did was go to shows. That was it. And like yeah. there there are bands like um why can't I think of what their name is now? God damn it. It's fine. Maybe it'll come to me later. I can think of what their old name was, but I can't... They're doing very well. They toured with Colorado. Um, <laughs> but they, like, that style of music was, like, just tearing up the Toronto music scene. Yeah. And, like, even, like, we have, like, an indie Toronto radio station, and it's all that type of music. Yeah. Like, uh, like I could probably be played on, like, the CBC, like, our, like, like the Canadian Broadcasting right. Channel. Like, they oh, yeah. have shows that I could be featured on, but none of our, like, indie rock radio stations... I would be so out of place. I don't, and like, I don't know why that is. It's it's a really interesting question because I've never thought about it before. Yeah. I've never thought about it before, but it's it's a lot of like, Colorado's a weird reference, but it is kind of that that style. Arkell's, uh, who else plays on that radio station? That kind of music. <laughs> is it called can rock? <laughs> Shark muffin with it, the puns. I love maybe it. Maybe should it's like it's like indie it's indie rock. Yeah. It's like a it's very upbeat. It's yeah. very like it's usually male fronted. I don't know. I don't write anything like like that. You don't write male fronted music? Why not? 
<laughs> you know, I've Where's been really looking. Song, okay? I've been looking inside and trying to decide why that is, and I still haven't <laughs> figured it out. So if I do, I'll let you know. So we That's already we cool. already invited you to what was it to the already, festival? The festival and something else. Oh, the the, the burnout stream. I have a, I have yeah. a very important oh, question. Shit. Do you yes. want to be part of Labia's experience? <laughs> <laughs> You know, if you get to that point, I'm in. Yeah, that's I am. Cool. I want to do Labia's Exposed. I'm not kidding you. I, I, I decided that while I was putting makeup on today. I was putting on makeup and I was like, I'm going to she do literally, Labia's Exposed. She and literally I, wanted to cancel. Only if Brit will come be on the show with me. That's my yes, one. If Kathy yes. Sparrow's got to come and be on the yes. show. If she's in, I'm in. Yes. I just feel like it's, I feel like she's just looking I mean, for an excuse to somewhere. cancel the German stream. That she no, has to do a bunch of work No, 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 it's going to be on a different day. It's going to be Oh, now we're just day. pushing the German stream back. No, How no, long no, do you no, think no, I'm going to no, be here? No, 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 the German stream is going to be on the 13th, but the Labia's Exposed is going to be it's after gonna be... that. Yeah, it's going to be fine. Anyway. Um, can I tell you guys a very strange story? Of yes, please. Uh, of course, we end? yes. It's about a dream. You know, everyone's favorite topic is other yes. people's dreams. Oh, I've I got a great dream for you. <laughs> yes. I had an anxiety dream about being on this show. I can't. Tell regardless us. of the fact that I wasn't stressed out about it at all. But that halfway through the show, silence just got super horny. And you just had to like go and you were like, he's just like this. He's just very <laughs> needy. And you just had to like go and like deal with it. And like my mom was watching the show Wait, and I was like, like literally deal well, with it? yeah, like literally deal with it. <laughs> I have to, oh my God. Was, what? It was, it was a lot. And I was just like trying to like play it really cool the whole time. I'm just like sitting, like we're still live and you guys are just like off camera, like doing the thing. And I'm just like, yeah, this is fine. <laughs> Oh my god. That is great. That's all. That's I just had to share that with you. That is amazing. That needs to lead off the next music exposed <laughs> compilation. That story. The I hilarious part is that is exactly the opposite of reality. That's what I love about it. Sarah would be the one that needs that. She's like, I need to go right now. It wouldn't be me. That's the hilarious part. It's true, yes. Sarah Tony now, Sarah help. Hawk 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 Beam. Hawk no, it's so. It, oh God, man, I love. I love that thing. That is amazing. Yes, I am just. I am just. I'm just like that. I guess it's why there's a blowjob yeah. giraffe on my channel. It's just. It is what it is. You know? I it was just so casual. You guys were just so like, yeah, it's fine. We're just gonna do it. We just this. do this I'm all the time. Like, this well, is why it's I'll called music exposed. Yeah, like, I mean, maybe we'll do that yeah. on Labia's exposed. Who knows? Perfect. <laughs> I'll just let you guys do it, and we'll just, I'll just have to deal with this really quickly. Wow. Sorry. Wow. It takes two minutes. Yeah. Ouch. Uh, I mean, the two, minute, the two minutes joke is, a, is just a general That's just situation. rude. It only takes 30 seconds. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Thomas Frank, thanks so much for that clip. No, I'm just saying, okay? I, I'm, uh, I'm fine with that. No, I... <laughs> wow, what an amazing guest you have been. Yeah, you like, have been I, awesome. I don't... I'm almost like, I don't want the show to end. What an amazing guest. Um, and like I said, I am a person that I'm always willing to kind of put my foot in my mouth about my, my predispositions about streamers. And I feel very silly that I never watched your stream earlier because I was aware of your existence. I just always... You know, I'm I'm that guy. I need to stop being that guy. I admit it. I'm that guy. <laughs> the first step to not to being stop. that guy is knowing that you're that guy. Oh, I know I'm True. that guy. I I know I, I make it very clear on this show that I am very stubborn and it's kind of hard to move me out of my beliefs. And you know, for me it was always just like I'm providing more value being an asshole in a ten viewer streamer chat than I am in a seventy viewer streamer chat. But what's interesting about your chat it, and I think a lot of, this is true of a lot of the cozy, quote unquote, cozy streamers. Ah, I have to ask this question. I don't care. It's another overtime question. Overtime! Overtime! Why do you, what is time, why do you really? think that so many streamers are cozy vibes streamers on Twitch? What do you think it is um, about the cozy actually, vibes that makes it so I have two fun? answers to this question. Okay. One is I think a lot of streamers 
have full-time jobs yes. and have to stream in the evening and live in apartments. And so you can't That's make true. a whole lot of noise in the evening. And so your your ah, only real choice is to like, like be that. quiet. Yeah. I know for me that was like a big thing. I couldn't make a lot of noise. And That's like a really it was good like uh, and like I think two, which is kind of drawn from one, is that then when new people start on Twitch and there's a lot of people who've already established this vibe, like a lot of the people that I was watching at first were people like Liv Harris and Claire Picks and <clears throat> Why did I just run out of people? There was a number of others that had that kind of like mellow vibe. Right. Even someone like Miss Mary Lou, you know, who yes. is, is smaller Susan, but also example, has like that, that vibe. I've never yeah, heard like of her before, so I have to check out her music when it comes out next week. Um, but like, you know, there was a lot of that stuff. And so like, you don't know what you're gonna do until you're influenced by someone, right? And so like yeah. people are kind of have these like time restraints and so they're already doing this kind of like cozy, oh, Venus is another one who oh, does yeah, really yeah. Yeah. that like yeah. chill yeah. vibes. Um, and so you look at the people who are doing really well and you're like, okay, this is what they're doing. This works, you know? And for me, I could only stream at night because I was working full time. Yeah. I couldn't make a lot of noise because of my neighbors. And so it made sense. And like, I also like, you know, I write a lot of fucking sad songs and it's right, all like right. sad and cozy. And like, you know, it, it works. And that's kind of the energy I have as well as very like, I don't know, warm. Yeah. Um, she says convincingly, mm. um, but <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> you know, and so like it fits. And I think that might be the reason why a lot of people gravitate towards that. Like if you come in watching Holocene, yeah, yeah. you're going to want to be big and have all the effects and have the, the full band and the, the loud vibes. But I think a yeah. lot, if you're looking at a lot of the other streamers, I would argue even someone like autopilot who is very good. I wouldn't necessarily say he's like cozy, but he's not loud. Yeah, it's cozy-ish. You know, he's, he's cozy a good ish. vibe. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's got a vibe. He's got a. He's got a. He's got the cozy uh, vibes. The, though. Yeah, yeah, he's got it. He's got that kind of that kind of idea going, and I think that that just breeds the same thing, right? People are like, "What are people doing?" And so they're gonna do that. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of like a, one thing kind of bred into another. Yeah. That's a really I good theory. I just discovered it as I was sitting here. I like it. Yeah. I actually think that's a very smart way of approaching it. I just want to encourage more streamers to be loud and obnoxious. Because we need more friends. I agree. Because you are loud and obnoxious. I need more friends that are loud and obnoxious and I agree like me. with that. Please, bigger streamers, be more loud and obnoxious so I can grow too because I'm very loud and obnoxious. Yes, yeah, so we're the Thank loudest you. and the most obnoxious people. We need more friends that are really obnoxious. Although my stream sounds like a crazy person to people outside because my stream actually is quiet because all my effects are in the box and all that stuff. Right. So anybody that's listening to me outside just thinks I'm a crazy person because yes. they'll literally just hear me screaming for like yeah. two hours Can and then occasional yeah. singing and then no That's actually noise. a great, a, a great um, impression of him. So when he plays, he's like, all you hear is guitar strings, acoustic, Fring, 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 fring. <laughs> but like super, like super quietly because obviously it's not, it, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's it's just the string. So yeah. fring, 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 fring. So, uh, so, uh, <laughs> hey guys, what's uh, up? Fring, fring, fring. <laughs> and then you hear, which is which is the piano. Yeah. You know? See, that's that's what my partner deals with all the time. Is just me like slamming on the piano and him being like, yes. "Is this this song? Yes. Yeah, it's that mm -hmm. song." Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. It is so true, though. Like it's anybody that is standing outside. I love Sunfire's video on that. That all of us are just crazy people to people in the outside world. Yes. Like to my neighbors, yeah. I walk outside and my neighbors all give me funny looks all the time that because they're just like, that guy is Aww, super that must be weird. nice walking outside. That is true. When I, I when I would walk, walk outside. outside and there were people out there <laughs> right? and they just think yeah. I'm a crazy person. What? Oh my God, the one question that I wanted to ask a lot ask of my Atlanta. Overtime! 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 There's one question that I want to ask you. How is it working in the gaming industry? Yeah, we didn't get oh, to that. Oh shit. This is a whole, this is a big overtime question. Yeah. Um, it's okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> the end. <laughs> that's it, that's the end of the story. Uh, um, it's, it's really good until it's really bad. Yeah. That's that's what I'll say, is that it's, you know, I worked at Ubisoft for a number of years. And oh, nice. 
it was great. It was really good. And then my boss quite literally fell in love with me. And then I had to leave because it was really yes. emotionally abusive and terrible. Oh, and no. I've talked about this a lot on stream now. I, um, last summer, there was a lot of people coming out about abusers on Twitch. And then a lot of people also came out about abusers in the gaming the game, industry. Yeah. Um, and I ended up being one of those people. Um, oh, and wow. like I was okay. included in like articles and stuff, which was crazy. Um, oh. Yeah, it was a really intense period of time, but I think like it was really good. It was it was the first time I'd really been able to kind of like talk about it. And like he like he got me the job and he was my boss, but he just became very emotionally attached to me. Yeah. And yeah. it became a very jealous relationship. It came to the point where like, he wouldn't let me talk to anyone else on our team. Oh like he like moved our desks around needlessly so that he could be beside me. Like oh, people wow. weren't even allowed to like say good morning to me in the morning. I wasn't allowed to ever be on Facebook on my computer because I would have just messenger open to be talking to my partner every once in a while during the day. And they're like, no, you don't need to have contact with the outside world while you're here. That is like, it was it was it was really bad um it and like that's just like scratching the surface of it oh, yeah um and so like that was really bad but i took a break from the game industry for a few years and now i'm back in it and it is a 180 experience i can't huh. i like i can't even begin to tell you like i work for an indie company now um called beans <laughs> which is really rad <laughs> um but we're like we're part of um devolver digital um the people who did like fall guys et mm -hmm. nice cool. um and so we're we're an indie company we're making games and like part of their main thing is like being super inclusive and being um very open we've had multiple people take you know like mental health leave this year not because of the work but just because of life and yeah. there's yeah. like one of our creative directors and it was very public about it it was like you know what like i have mental health issues i'm changing my medication i'm gonna take a few months off cool and that was amazing and yeah. everyone yeah. was supportive and the company was able to to do that and was able to tell it's it's like all of the employees like if this is something that you need to do we're here we're gonna support you we're gonna see you through this that's and amazing. that's so amazing and like just just incredible and like it's such a beautiful experience to work there and like everyone's so talented and so creative as well and like I'm very I'm very very grateful to be in the in the place that I am now. Also, I didn't mention before I'm a sound designer. <laughs> That's yeah. what nice. I do. Um, not a composer. I don't like write the music for video games, but yeah, I but do like all the sound effects. That's so awesome. like anything that isn't music that you hear in a game, yeah. that's what I do. That's awesome. Um, so you have like. A is there okay i have a follow-up question what is the funniest yes. prop you used for sound design <laughs> like the, the, the most unusual <laughs> funny prop that you've used uh um it's actually okay i have to think about it for a second but I, I like a lot of things are like libraries these days. So a lot of it isn't like recording your stuff anymore. Yeah. Like you can just kind of like search what you're looking for. So a lot of it is taking my brain and being like, okay, I want this sound. But what is something else that makes the sound that I'm looking mm -hmm. for? Yeah. Because then you can like look up that in a library and find it. Cause you know, you're not going to find the like exact thing that you're looking for. Um, because it doesn't necessarily exist. But like, I think the, like this year, at least in terms of like recording, um, like I just spent an entire day just like dropping miscellaneous items from my kitchen on the floor. <laughs> yes, for, like for like impact sounds for like when item like ob like random objects in the world fall on the ground. You need those sounds, so I just like spent right. a day in my kitchen like dropping like cans and forks <laughs> yeah. and like bags of rice and like just like weird miscellaneous stuff on That's the floor amazing. and I'm just like this is my job this is what I'm doing today yes. like it's just so weird I kind of want that job um, now too <laughs> it's pretty cool it's I'm pretty, it's pretty you pretty, pretty much fun. have yeah. that job your stream is just you making random noises <laughs> that all day that is very true but that's with my mouth <laughs> no you in the middle, I, this was a funny story. I normally don't tell the behind the scenes story, oh. but I could tell that I was really gonna like Alana when we were talking during the sound check and I'm talking about something and in the middle of the fucking sound check, Sarah in her ADD brain is like, oh, there's this instrument on the desk. Do, do it, demonstrate it for us. She picks it up and I'm talking and I'm like into the conversation. She's telling a story. I'm, I'm telling totally a story about something like, and we're just talking, talking and I'm like, oh, this is gonna be a good one. And she's doing this. And I'm like, oh, I 
guess Sarah wants to go now. That was my response. I'm like, thank you for the nice conversation. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yes. So it's that, a that, Suzu. It's a Suzu. It's a Suzu. 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 But, yeah. oh but my yeah, God. that's true. That was, that was, but, okay. We're so over time. This is the long, I think this might be the longest episode. Yeah. Of music exposed I'm not ever. Sorry. Me neither. At all. Me neither. Yeah. I am I've so. I've had a great time. I think, yes. I, think, I think Silence is in love with you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm in love with yeah. you, you crazy woman. I'm just saying he's in love with two women now. It's okay. I'm in love with. I'm in love he's with a lot of women. He's in love with a lot of people. I'm he's in, in love with Alice the Little Alien too. He's I in love am with in love. Jay Dublay. He's in love with TVR. He's in love with a lot of people. This man has a big heart. I love a lot of people. I can't help myself. That's very true. I I love everybody. And yes, I am so grateful that you were willing to do the show and to be here with us. Um, I feel very silly about not watching the stream earlier. I always like to talk about (laughs) stuff like that. But I know that... I have Brittle Star... um, Sorry. I have Brittle Star um, uh, also on my little labias exposed. So Because you want a Brittle on it too, right? Okay, got it. Not Brittle. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I won't be on that. So can I... Oh, tell me. Cafe Sparrow. Oh, Cafe Sparrow. Yes. Okay, oh, Cafe yeah. Sparrow. Good. Okay, okay awesome. so. But thank you so much for being here. I'm so appreciative. We'll have to have you back for other things that we do. And yeah, definitely, we need to get that. We've been saying we we're going to do it forever. We were going to do, we do a, a, a kind of semi-podcast every once in a while called What Other Streamers Want to Talk About. Waswata. <laughs> so I would love to have you on that because you obviously have the experience of that. And so anybody that can talk about it, Sunfire said she would be on that as well. To kind of talk about those issues and the labia's exposed. <laughs> Amazing. Wait, I'm, I'm sure Sun would be on labia's exposed with you <laughs> because she's been. You and listen. You and Sun came up in the business together. You guys are like team to the end. You came up in we the are. business. You collaborate. We did. No, Sun would do anything you asked. Sun asked and her I to are, are good friends. Yes. Yeah, so I'm like. I don't know if she wants to be on labia's. Like, I think she would be. She a would little be on uncomfortable. labia's exposed. She would be a little uncomfortable. I disagree. She would be on labia's. I don't exposed. know. I don't know about that. So, <laughs> she tolerated our horrible Instagram joke for weeks and weeks at a time. That is not the same as being on Labia's Exposed. That is a little different. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I see. All right. So anything you want to say before you wrap up today? A- any last words? Any last words <laughs> besides buy your vinyl? Oh, that's all I was going to say. <laughs> uh, I ruined it. Uh, I ruined it. Why? I have a Always vinyl right pre-order now. for some reason. It's on Bandcamp. Yeah. If you want a vinyl, it's ten new recordings, some old songs, some new songs. That's it. That's it's the right that's there. the pitch. Buy that's her LP. Amazing. Buy her LP. Thank you. Buy her wow. LP. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being Thank such you. an amazing Thank guest. You so Thank you so much for being, being here. here today. Thank you for having me. I've had honestly such a such an amazing yes, time. It was so nice too. talking to you guys. Thank have you. Have a good night. Or have day, a good actually. one. Have a good rest Bye. of your evening. Bye. Bye, friends. Bye. 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 <laughs> wow. That was awesome. I yes. really enjoyed that. That was really awesome. I agree. What an amazing guest. Yeah. What an amazing guest. Yeah. We have, like, this show, we've talked about it before. It's so awesome to get to meet the people that we get to meet. Um, and, and we've got more new friends coming up that I don't know super well in the coming weeks because we have uh, Raina Mystique is our next guest that's coming up. Oh, really? Yeah, I so, know that. Um, yeah, so she's up next. And then we have Guitar Shredder, who I also have seen both of their streams a couple of times, but I'm not, I don't know them super well. And so I'm super excited to have them. Uh, there is no Music Exposed next week. As of this month, Music Exposed is now every other week. And we're going to start putting in apparently Labia's Exposed on the all That's Expo- just once. We, I don't that's know. Just once. Listen, I don't know how that's going to be in terms of, I don't know. I'm ju- I just want to do Labia's Exposed once and see how have it goes. Have fun with that. I'm not going to be you're involved with that. You're going to be right? on. How am I going to be host, on it? Because you're the host. What are you talking about? Okay, you're great. literally the host. Um, so that's what we're going to do. I'm just um, the host of a bunch of women. So it's like yeah. The View with me. No, That sounds terrible. Listen, it's going to be beautiful. It's going to okay, be... Great. I have Cafe Sparrow, Alana, Alana Maddie, Renee Rosa, who's not a woman. Uh, Pet Fest, who's not a woman. I also put in Northbound Matt, but he's also not a woman. Because he's just signing up Northbound Matt I'm for just whatever signing him up. I'm just signing him up because... Why because can't Mum Jazz be on it? Mum... Mom Jess is not a streamer. Doesn't matter. She's technically she's okay. She fine. won't understand what it is. She doesn't even know what what a lady is exposed is. She's, just, <laughs> she's gonna sit there and laugh the whole time. That's, That's all fine. she's gonna do. There's nothing wrong with yeah. that. So if any of you uh, streamers want to be on Labia's Exposed and I am feel stupid. very uncomfortable, um, while Silence is gonna be the host, 
Um, oh, I won't be uncomfortable. I can roll with the punches. I'm good. Yeah, you're you're gonna be the host. I'm just gonna be also a guest on it because oh, okay, I'm done good. with being a host. I'm kidding. I'm I don't kidding. blame you. Being a host is a lot of work sometimes. Although in your case, it's you don't have to do the work. Which no, is nice. I just have the boobs. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Anyway, Raid of Mystique on our next show and Elena Betty. <laughs> um, amazing, amazing. And um, on the thirteenth, you'll have... be you'll hold on. You'll be streaming tomorrow. You have Daisy Duke cosplay tomorrow. I do. I have a Daisy Duke cosplay tomorrow. Very special. And then I'll, I will likely be streaming. I don't know if I'm going to do music again tomorrow or not. I'll be streaming tomorrow. Uh, it's my U.S. friendly stream. So jump in on that. And then as you mentioned on the 13th, we are we did the fundraiser stream for America where we put Sarah through the ringer and she still has some challenges and things that she has to do. And now she has been coming up with things for me to have to do that are German related. So now the opposite silences in Germany stream is gonna happen. So we'll have goals for that. I, I know I'm spoiling one of them or I talked a little bit about one of them, but I know one of yours is to put me in a traditional German dress. I yes. know that's one of them. So not later hosen, but a dress. We're gonna do that stream on the thirteenth. Uh, you told me. You yeah. said it was. So the it's 13th. gonna be yeah. on the thirteenth of February, and uh, I wanna also put a little uh, segment in it where people, um, somebody wins a date with you. So I if, already have to fulfill a whole weekend with Warrior, although I've been yeah, fulfilling my life with Warrior. That is very true. But you will, um, you, there will also be where streamers are on. So if you are a streamer, oh, you're doing either, like you're going the full dating show. Yeah, show route. either woman or man or you know non-binary, whatever, whatever. It doesn't matter. Silence will date you. So if you are interested in dating silence, we're gonna have a little dating show on that on the thirteenth too. Hey, is Northbound Matt on that too? Without without having to to be asked as well. Is, no, is he, he, if you want, if you want, only if you are interested in dating silence and whoever. Northbound Matt is def no. Northbound Matt wants to get something. Northbound Matt wants to marry me. He's invited yeah, me to his well, marriage. Yeah, well, then he needs to be on that show so we can do questions and stuff right. like that. So you can you can at the end uh, choose your date. She literally just whores me out her. all the time. She whores me out all the time. It's literally just how can we whore out silence? Let's do it. Uh, yeah. Every time. I am a good I'm I'm a good marketing person. Anyways, don't forget tomorrow Sunday, Daisy Duke cosplay from me and America. <laughs> at 1 p.m. CET, uh, which is, uh, did I just go into Portuguese because I had Portuguese in my mind? You my, did yes, start did. to go into Portuguese. 1 p.m. CET, which is uh, Me Dia, um, which is eight, 7 a.m. EST and 4 a.m. No. Uh, 4 a.m. PST, I believe something so, yeah. like that, and we're gonna raid today, um, Calvin Thomas because he just hit partner, and we want to celebrate with him, and um, yeah, we're gonna do that. Calvin Thomas was on the show last week, and was it last week? Or yeah, it was last week. week yeah. yeah. So we just want to give him some love because he hit partner. Um, so we're gonna do music exposed crew. And that is the raid message. Thank you so much, everybody. Go follow Alana Maddie. By the way, don't forget to check out the bulletin board too. Go on music. And yeah, if that's show. nice. Alana, get us that reputation. Hit partner this week so that we get reputation as partner maker. I'm never making partner, so I want to be partner maker though. So let's just make be everyone partner, partner maker. Yeah, yeah, people are like, I'm on music exposed. I mean, it's I, had, luck I, had, I had the I had the opportunity to be partner more than a year ago. I know, you didn't want to be. I just don't want it to be. Then all of a sudden I wanted to be, then I applied and they denied it. And then I was like, well. I'm not gonna be a partner because no one likes me. <laughs> Yay me. I'm kind of like Lunar Tides, I'm stupid. In that sense, you know, I just don't take partner. Just call Lunar Tides stupid. <laughs> no, like, I'm kind of like Lunar Tides. Because, stupid no. as fuck. Because Lunar they, Tides is fucking stupid. <laughs> Lucas, you're they stupid. Were, no, 